gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. This is episode 232. A lot of stuff happened over the weekend, obviously, the Mike Vrabel podcast. It is, it's fucking electric, man. That dude, it's such a unique relationship that Will and I have with this man. And you definitely see it all unfold. The good times, the awkward times, the fun times, the serious times, it's incredible. But before we get into any of that, let's talk about the durable, reliable vehicle of Chevy Silverado. Summer is here, and what better way to take advantage of all it has to offer than with the Chevy Silverado. Chevy Silverado Summer. Wait, Silverado Summer. Jesus, dude, my eyes. I, I gotta get LASIK. I gotta get LASIK. It's gotta happen. Silverado Summer. Think of all the possibilities from off-road adventures to DIY projects and hardcore work. Silverado has the capability and technology to make this summer your best one ever with nine different Silverado models to choose from and engines that range from the powerful Turbomax to the 6.2 liter V8 and the Duramax Diesel. You can count on Chevy Power to perform Chevy Power Performance to get anything done. Like many of you, you've been hitting the road a lot lately, and it seems like everywhere we go, there's an army of Silverados and Silverado owners. So shout out to all of you. Game, recognize game. Head over to Chevy.com to check out the Silverado and all Chevy trucks, the official trucks of Bustin' With The Boys. Dude, I just let them in on a little glimpse. Obviously, we had the the uh, Rabel podcast. It literally just happened like six sec- like six seconds ago. And I think it's a hilarious pod where we're like kind of bouncing all over the place. Like, no question. It starts off awkward. No question. Starts off awkward. Feel a little uncomfortable because you we like legit don't even know how to start it because Rabel does have multiple personalities when it comes to me and Will. At one moment he's your best friend. The next moment he's like, there's no question. You there's verbally. no question in my mind that I felt like he wanted to fight me. At one point in the spot. When he was talking. Yes. That's the Ohio like, in him, though. He's like. Yeah. I think he's starting to get serious. He fucking wanted those. I thought you were getting serious, too. No, I had to. Once I saw the look in his eye, I was like, okay, let's come. It is a small quarters. He's got a long reach. Like, got to figure out my distance. Yeah, but all, all is fair in love and war. Like, I think you'd handle that. The problem would be Vrabe would swing first because I'm thinking in my head, like, what am I going to do? Fucking just try to go after Vrabe's right now? Yeah. Yeah, that would have you been. You know what I mean? That'd have been a tough fucking. And then I feel sure. like if he's swinging first, I'm 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 at a disadvantage because he's got reach. Like you've seen him, you've seen him try to mess around at practice with guys. Long it's arm a motherfucker. Healthy, it's a it's a it's a healthy respect. I'm sitting there, I was like, fuck, dude, he's afraid. Take it easy. We're joking. You gotta get in the body real quick, and you handle your business. <laughs> yeah. But it's about getting to the body. Right, right. Yeah, get into the body, get into the ground fast. But I, I really, truly enjoyed that podcast through and through. Yeah, I, I know in the beginning, I, I, it's hilarious. I can't even, like, remember the beginning. But, yes, I was feeling the same vibe. Like, when he sat down, I'm like, you know, where do we kind of, where do we start off on this? I know, and then there was, like, 10, 15 minutes of us just peppering him with serious questions. And he's like, when the fuck did you guys get serious? Like, when did that happen? And I was like, all right, yeah. It's you're a nod of right. respect. It is, because there's it a is. lot of news surrounding the Titans right now that people want to get into. Yeah, and Vrabe is somebody who, you know, we feel like we have the relationship and the rapport with him to where he'll answer those questions. So you kind of, I'm thinking to myself, like, it's good to ask those questions because I feel like he'll give us more than what he would, you know, anybody else he's talking to. Yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, man. Sitting there in the most fucking alpha posture of all time, just, he was laid out all over the couch, the table. He was getting cozy on this damn bus. He's making himself at home. Yeah. He's the best, man. He's... It's, it's just funny how the relationship is built, like, over time. Like, it, it's like I was excited to talk about some of the old stories, but even as I was trying to deliver them and I'm thinking about them, that's when the nerves are kicking in. Like, hey, have you seen some of the Kevin Byard clips? Yeah. Like, because it was a body session with that Kevin I hated Byard. you. Yeah. It, it's, it, it was awesome, man. I feel like we need to get to this pod ASAP, but let's hit some tear talk and, or not tear talk. Shout out, no free shout out, Pepe. Mm. Those are good. Yeah. Do that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do shout out, no free shout out. Boys in the back, do we have any shout outs back Before, there? Hang on. What'd you guys think of the pod? Epic. As a Titans fan, it's so fun to be around Vrabel. He's, we were just talking about it, like probably the coolest and best coach in the NFL. He's my favorite Titans coach ever. Second being Jeff Fisher, but Vrabel is all time. If you're a Titans fan, you're going to absolutely love this episode. Mm. JP? Yeah, you know me, man. Die Hard Titans fan. Love Vrabel. Was a big Patriots fan during his time there. Uh, was a Texans fan when he was with the Texans. So it's been, it was cool. Great, great football talk. It was cool to see y'all's dynamic because we always hear about it via group chat. And we got to see the group chat come to life, which was yeah. dope. What did you guys think of the dynamic the whole time? 
Could you feel, uh, definitely at the beginning, there's no Definitely question. at the beginning. There was, but throughout the pot, are you feeling like, uh, you know, oh, you can tell, there's yeah. a couple things I'm sitting there talking through and I'm like, I, I was nervous. The beginning, 100%. It was like, oh my gosh, because right before the pot, right before you got here, Will's like, y'all know, I mean, <laughs> when Rape shows up, I'm going to shell up ASAP. Yeah. Do it every day. <laughs> yeah, and then it just folds out in real time. You're like, oh, yeah, no. we had said something and laughed and laughed about it, and then I was like, but you guys also know me. Like right when Rape shows up, I'm about to shell up. <laughs> I did. It was it was nerve wracking. Like there was a point where we started talking about 2018 how Rapes was an asshole, and then you looked at Rapes and goes, "These are his words, not mine." I'm thinking, "Oh fuck," am I speaking out of turn? Like literally in my okay, in my own head. Say, once you said you said like uh, unfair, I think is the word you said. Like there are some times where you were unfair, and then that's when I looked over Rapes. I'm like. Those are his words. <laughs> oh, just let your boy out the hang, dude. But hey, but it ended up, it went exactly how our, our group chats go with him. Yeah. It's yeah. just awkward, then it's fun, and then it can get serious at times. It was. Yeah. Oh, we all know we're clearly joking. Let's continue to have fun and banter back and forth. Oh, wait a minute. Is something getting serious in here? Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to respond to this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are we cool? <laughs> Can't just walk away. Can't just leave the chat, put your then phone you down. Just get told, like, stop being fucking sensitive. And then I'm like, I, I don't know. What, what do you want mean? Me to do? No doubt, dude. Oh. No fucking doubt. Um, but yeah, let's hit the shout out, no free shout out, and uh, pet peeve of the week. JP, shout out, no free shout out. Oh, do you not have one? Oh, man. Uh, my shout out, no free shout out goes to, it happens in the spring, in the summer, probably more so. Actually, it happens all year round. But my shout out, no free shout out goes to a good, hard sneeze. When you like truly just feel that it's from the chest and, and it just feels cleared out. You feel like, God, I needed that. So that's my shout out. No free shout outs. Hell yeah. Uh, mine goes along with our activity from last night, but shout out. No free shout out to free concert tickets. Damn. It is. <laughs> It's so elite. Once you get in the venue, you're like, okay, I didn't spend any money on tickets. So like I can, spend as much as I want to on some beers or like a merch item, whatever. And on Friday night, I went to a Send Amphitheater with some friends for Young the Giant. And I I don't even really care for the band that much. Like they're good objectively, but they're not in my daily rotation. And I thought I was going to get a free ticket and didn't. And I ended up paying $80 to go to this show that I really didn't care to be at. So getting the free ticket to Blink was, it, I felt like it leveled it out. I like spent like $40 and $40. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to uh, free concert tickets. And obviously that was going to be my shout out as well. But I, I'll change my shout out. But I just want to add on to your shout out. Okay. Like I want to give a shout out to the Predators. Yeah. Because Brandon, who works with the Predators, he works with their media group. I reached out to him about possibly purchasing a suite for the event. Hit me up on Wednesday and he's like, hey, do you still need a suite? And I was like, yeah. He's like, call me. I called him and he goes, hey, I went up the chain of command. Predators want to thank you for everything you've done for us. Like, we're going to give you the suite for free. And I thought that was like cool as fuck. Like it was just awesome. Like going to see Blink, obviously my favorite band of all time and all that. I was like very, very grateful for that. So shout out the National Predators as well. The whole organization. They're incredible. So that's my add on to Jax. Uh, my shout out and free shout out this week. It's pretty simple. Just getting a new hair, just a fresh haircut. You just feel like a new person. You feel like you, you got a little bit of your swagger back. You just feel more confident in yourself. Shout out. Fresh haircuts. Mm. God, Garrett is like the number one culprit of that. Nice one, Mitch. Willie? My shout out, no free shout out goes to picking a good booger. Go on. Picking a good booger. I feel like if this first, when people first absorb that, it's kind of like, oh shit. But also I think we all have to understand at this point that literally 100% of people pick their nose on the sly or they get caught, but there's nothing like picking a good burger. Like when you got, there's different, bur there's different boogers now. When you got them dry boys, like right at the top here and you can just kind of get the thumb out with it. Mm -hmm. There's ones that kind of hang back a little bit and you got a nice, it's got a nice little lag when you get it pulled down. It kind of just like weirdly comes out deep from the nostril and you're like, yo, that, was, that might be a PR. Yeah. But then there are some downsides. Like when you get the ones that are kind of just running and they're all around your nose and you feel like you just can't, it's like a never ending trying to get it out. That sucks. But all in all, I've always been a massive uh, fan of nose picking. So my shout out, no free shout out is going to go to picking a good booger. I think you open a lot of people's eyes with that one. 
In a yeah. positive way? In a positive way. Okay. Because, uh, you know, picking a booger is a faux pas. Yeah, I feel like, this, yeah, I feel like it's, a, there's, it's like a massive closet fan base, right? And you yeah. just kind of need that one, like, yo, fucking picking boogers is, we all do Everyone's it. like, oh, him too? Yeah, and oh, it's all yeah. good, yeah. yeah. I love that. My shout-out, no free shout-out, is going to go to the nod you get from another man as you walk by on the sidewalk. Mm. Just everything's fucking understood. You don't even know him. You've never spoken to him in your entire life, but you see him. And you guys just give the the head up or the head down, and you just keep going about your business. But every there was a whole conversation there, a whole fucking conversation. You said a lot without saying anything at all. Exactly. I've actually thought about that recently, like the yeah. relationships you have with people without knowing their name, what they do, like anything about them, but you see them, like you know, throughout the week, whether it's the gym, coffee shop, whatever. But you have that kind of that nod of just like, yeah, what's up, bro? What's up? You just, yeah. Either you've seen him a couple times or yeah. for me, I'm a big like, hey, how's it going guy? Sometimes you just walk in, maybe I'm walking the dog because I keep up my hand out like this. And I look at a guy and he fucking looks up at me and we catch eyes. We just both give him one of those. It's like, brother, you have a fantastic fucking day. Yeah. Like what a deal that is. So that's my, that's my shout out. No for shout out. That's a solid one. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Isn't it funny too on the booger thing that... <laughs> Hey, have have uh, have any of y'all ever seen me pick my nose? Yes, you have. Do what? Oh, JP's used that one before. Oh, CTE man, chalk it up. Continue though on your your thought when you pick your book. My my thought was gonna be like, okay, say you have seen me, but I think it's funny too. Like, I've never really seen you guys do it, but we all just know that we all do it. Isn't that wild? Ooh, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like no, you can't have this. You're, I mean, you're, you're cleaning yourself as is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think when there's one like right where the bone is, and it's right up there, like almost blocking like airway, and you kind of get out there and you just scoop that thing out, click that thing. You're out. also the yeah. slide out that little. A little oh. hang back. In the shower, you're like essentially washing your hands. I feel like already. You're just kind of no, but it doesn't give that like picking picking your nose is low key in a very minimal way, like a Q-tip in your ear. Like you get that shit done, you're like, oh fuck, like that. My day got better. I felt something good about that. In the shower, it's like you're just you're just taking care of business. You're yeah. cleaning yourself. Sometimes you feel one up there, and then you. I don't know about you guys, but I think to myself, let me stop. I'm gonna take some private. I'm gonna get in some some peace and quiet before I get this boy out. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, this isn't one you just pick and, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something in there. There's something in that I want to take my time with this one because I don't want it to be rushed. Dude, I, one that I love, because I, I don't know if you guys get this, but I'm like right at the base in the middle. Sometimes it'll get a little raw. Like, you do that and like, it kind of scabs up a little bit. I get that, change the seasons. Yeah. And I've had that recently for like two weeks. It's been bugging the fuck out of me, my right nostril. But it'll get like backed up in here and I'll find my private space start digging around and you kind of feel it like gathering together. You feel the edge of the scab kind of comes to where you're like, you yeah. kind of want to peel it and feel. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, if you start to rip it a little bit, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, like, this too, is, now I'm in pain. Now bleeder, I'm in pain. It's a bleeder. But you, got, you kind of get the boys all, all congregating together in one unit and then you give it the, and that fucking explosion that comes out, it's like, I don't know about the explosion part. Really? I've never done that one. Oh, that's just a big booger, homie. You collect them all and then it's not, yeah, yeah, you're like kind of in there and you like, you go in for one because you know one's there, but he's got a couple of buddies with him you didn't know about. You walked into a room, you thought it was one individual, it's actually multiple individuals. Yeah. That I, thing for me, and I can get them kind of together, kind of, you know, tie them up and then fucking send them out. That to me is like a refreshing feeling. What like, scares right? me when I send them out, what scares me when I send them out is that I'm not going to get to see them. Like it might not hit my, when I'm like, I hit a snot rocket, I'm like, damn, I kind of wanted to see the. Oh, you want to see I it. want to see the trophy. One of my number one lies in life is when I just get a, a random <laughs> bloody nose. Like, everybody's like, hey, man, how's, you got a bloody nose? I'm like, yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Massive boogers with me. <laughs> you always got to lie about it. You yeah. always got to lie. Especially when you're young, too. I feel like you just dig in that nose. You just start bleeding. You're like, oh, what's going on? You're like shoving fucking. It's like the altitude or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we're yeah. in South Carolina. I don't know what the fuck happened. Just being, being like a kid, like not to pivot, but like when you're younger, like farting, like getting a good fart out, like a lot of people would be like, yo, don't, don't do that around here. And then you, as you get older, like you especially, like just farting all the time. 
like you get a good fart out and kind of like your stomach's hurting a little bit. You're like, is this a shit? Is this not a shit? And then you yeah. let out a big fart and you like, feel so much better. Yeah. That's a fucking... That was similar to the actually, booger. Farts are awesome. Yeah. Those are scary farts. What a pod. Pet peeve. JP, do you have a pet peeve of the week? Yep. Peeve of the week? My peeve of the week is... Uh, you know, like, I guess there's two seats to the toilet. So, like, the, the full cover and then the one you sit on. So, it's the second one that you sit on when you're pooping. If When you lift it up to go pee and it doesn't stay up. And it just continuously falls down. It makes me so mad. Because that one in there's got it. Not It doesn't have it. It, it stops. But some, like, it, it has, like, a little bit of lean forward. Right. And, but you know you can trust it. You know you can count on it. Yeah, but I think what bugs me the most is that, like, people live in those houses and they use that every single day and just, like, let that fly. And think the same thought probably every time. Right. It's like, yo, it takes five seconds to fix this. Now, now feel the, the wrath of the stream everywhere. You clean it up later. <laughs> My ass probably wouldn't. No. Fix. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it will happen to me probably, and I'm not. Gonna fix it. <laughs> I got one. Uh, this might be our first ever seasonal pet peeve. Oh. So in the spring and fall, I do not abide by this rule, but in the summer and probably mostly the winter, my pet peeve is people who choose to sit outside at restaurants in the middle of summer. I I'm a sweater. I I just sweat profusely, especially when I'm outside in Nashville. It's like 90 degrees. And someone who will make the decision to sit outside in the sun for an hour and a half while you eat, I might be alone on this one. But I remember when we were in Vegas and me, you, and JP went and got breakfast at that spot. And they were kind of like pushing us. They're like, if you want to sit outside, like it'll be quicker. And we we're like, nah, like, we'll, we'll wait. And then they're like, all right, come this way. But I don't know. I just, when it's too hot outside, I want AC. I want to be able to enjoy my food. I don't want to walk out with back sweat and like, you know, pit stains. But when that fall weather comes around and it's a nice crisp 70, yeah, get me outside in the scenery. I no love question. it. No question. So, yeah, that's my pet peeve. You're not alone, Jack. Uh, my pet peeve of the week, it's something that I noticed last night, and it's it happens a lot when you're out like at like some sort of event. It's the people that are just nonstop taking videos that they're never going to watch again. Like, you can take, like, one or two of, like, maybe, like, your favorite songs, but, like, you shouldn't be recording the entire show because you're never going to watch it again. Like, live in the moment, put your phone down, have some fun, like, enjoy the people around you, enjoy the scenery and everything. Like, you're not going to fucking watch the video of the concert through the phone again. That is no lie. That is no lie. It's, I took it's, zero photos last night. Yeah. You guys saw the text. And you, were, and you probably had the best time ever. I did, except for that one except girl. For, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, pet peeve of the week is women that are, get too drunk and then hit on you in front of your wife and steal your shit. That's a, that's a that's an easy pet peeve. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Being handsome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my pet peeve is gonna go along with the food thing. I can't stand when, like, if you're on a date and um, you're ordering an appetizer and the appetizer's uneven amounts of whatever it is. So, like, we got dumplings recently. And there was five. It's like, who's getting third dumpling? And so you kind of wait and you play like the, no, you got it. No, you got it. Back and forth. And eventually you're like, yeah, I'm going to like, yeah. just give a six or four. Right. The quality. Yeah. And with that, we were at a, a sushi spot, me, JP, and Will in New York. And I feel like that happened every single roll. And it was like, in my head, I'm like, I want this fucking food. You want it. But I'm like, all right, go ahead, Will. And then I knew Will got that one. I was like, all right, go ahead, JP. I'm like, I know I'm getting this next one. And I'm just hoping it's the best one, honestly, selfishly. I gave up that last roll quick. I was like, y'all got it. <laughs> yeah, I that one that fucking pissed me off, dude. Dude, sea urchin. It's gross as fuck. Ugh. Just overpriced. It's literally just a booger. <laughs> That's all that is. Yeah. You do yours. I'm still thinking about mine. Uh, my pet peeve of the week is going to be when you pull your gym shorts out of the dryer and your drawstring is tucked inside the fucking waistband. Not where it's like half an inch, but like three, four inches away. And you're like, dude, I got to fucking work to get this shit. You're doing this the whole way across until you finally inchworm that motherfucker across so you can get that thing out. And then you got to pull it and then you got to re-stretch it. 
And then sometimes you get the, the twofer where the motherfucker goes back in. Oh. You know, you pull the drawstring out and then you go stretch, to stretch and then it slides you, back in. Yeah. And then it slides back in. Just to, it doesn't even have to, it, then it goes in just a little bit where you know it's kind of easy. But hey, bro, I just fucking did this with you. Like, why are we doing this again? Yeah. Hoodies too. Yes. Hoodies dog. too, Hoodies bro. Bad about that. Oh, one, yeah. One's super long. The other one's on your fucking top of your head. And you're like, dude, what are we doing? Because shorts, I feel like you get some sometimes not favorable material, but you know, like when it has like uh, that little plastic tip to where you can kind of grab it as you're like guiding it through. Yeah. On the hoodie, when you're messing with like 100% cotton or something like that, I feel like you the hoodie so much fucking takes so much more time. Yeah. And it just pisses you off because I started like tying my tying my hood. Oh, for real? To, before I put it in the washer. That's smart. That's like, that's heads up. That's, that way. A, that's a vet move. That's, you've been in the game for a while and you figured that out on your own. Like, I, I, I'm taking sick and now. tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Do you know what that uh, plastic piece on the end of the shoelace or your drawstring is called? Mm -mm. An aglet. Yeah, so aglet, yes. I had to look it up to make sure I said it right. But An aglet? It's always a fun little. Oh, wow. shit. Educational pod. Yeah. I know that. My pet peeve is... When that green text pops up in a group chat. Oh. And you got that one fucking douchebag of a friend who has an Android, Google phone. I don't even know what they're called. I don't even know what the other phones are called. But when it's not an iPhone and it's not iMessage, it's not light blue. When that green pops up, dude, it's like, I don't know. It's like when you... <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know what I'm fucking saying. Yeah. Amen. And then a video is sent to the group or a picture. And that shit comes in this big. Yeah. And you're like, I can't even fucking Or see when, you know, somebody like likes it. it and then it says like, Taylor Lewan liked this message. And I'm thinking like, Taylor's got an iPhone. I know it ain't him. Yeah. But it's the green text message. When that green text pops up in a group chat, you're just thinking, who's the motherfucker that wants to ruin the day today? Yeah. They just gotta. You just leave them out and tell them later. I think yeah, you gotta, you yeah, gotta it is one out. of those yeah, deals, man. Out, man. The green text messages just pisses you off. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it gives all vibes. With that being said, let's get to this my favorite podcast. You <laughs> I'm feel like he's dragging. No, I'm just I gotta I'm hungry. Oh, this is more me I just being a little like you. I, I want to eat. Yeah, Brave was saying hangry. I feel him. Yeah, there are a couple times it's like coming to a daddy's like, what's next? He's just like, fuck. I don't know. He loved yeah. that pod. I'm like, oh, y'all got me. And then he kept yeah. Yeah. And they just tell stories. Or you like try and work on, like you're trying to say something, thinking you're going to get like the response you're wanting out of him. Yeah. I, I can, I was already thinking about, uh, when I was talking about bitching about the trash time going in for the Bills game and he's just yeah. kind of like looking at me like, you're mad you're playing? Yeah. Like, Yo, bro, you know that's what I'm like, talking bravely. about. bravely. Nobody wants to <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants trash time. And, but I thought he, I thought he was for sure gonna react with the Belichick thing. I thought we were gonna get him. I know, I know. Because my next thing, like when he started, to, if he started to say something about, it, I was gonna be like, so you know, you know what the nickname is? Because somebody did say that, or they, or it was talked about about him, and then somebody asked him about it at a interview like the next week. Yeah, I haven't heard that a whole lot. I like that you brought it up because I want to see how he handled it. He handled it well. He handled it, unfortunately, like the best way you can. Like yeah. being like, oh, I didn't even uh, know. I never knew about that. Yeah. And Vray, be hype, dude. If like if I was a head coach and I just beat you at even some of your own games, I'd be on the sideline like hype as fuck. Yeah, I'm him. You'd be like Mahomes. Yeah, out yeah, there, yeah. Dude. I'm him. Shake that hand after the game, just like yeah, motherfucker. Because Vray will talk shit, dude. Heavy in games. Like, I remember being out there, and the play hasn't even started yet, and I could hear Vray will talking shit to a DB or a linebacker. Yeah. on the other team, like he's that's him. So, but it was really enjoyable to have. We we gotta get him on again. Yeah, yeah. He's good. you think he's gonna come on during the bye week? No, I don't. But he did say he would. Yeah, and so we'll send him a final. The good thing is he came late, so we have that over his head. Yeah, just for some negotiating. We don't room. have to pay him anymore. Yeah, technically, technically, depending what our price is for the fine. Well, with that said, boys, please enjoy this episode of Busting with the Boys with Mike Rabel. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode to bring you an ad read. And that ad read is cars.com. Wherever life takes you next and whoever you're looking to, wherever you're looking to be, mm. there's a car for that on cars.com.
Whether you're moving from the burbs to the city, so you want a smaller, sportier car. Or you're expanding your family and you want a safer option. Or you've taken up snowboarding and need more cargo space for that gear. Mm, there are advanced search filters to help you narrow down the car you're looking for. They have deal badges that identify the best deals. And they even have a quick and easy ways to sell or trade in your car. Over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities mm. to meet your changing needs. And up to 50,000 cars are added daily at 2cars.com, so you know you'll find the car you'll love. I love cars.com. It's the best. Honestly, every time I'm looking for a new vehicle, which seems to be happening quite frequently lately, yeah. cars.com is where you know, I all go. All the best filters. It's the, the website mm. is seamless. It's the easiest possible. You can find your next possibility on cars.com. Where to next? Where to next? And also, where you're going next is back to this episode. You know how it works, man. Get a little closer. Yeah, get close. I'm in here for, for the real thing. The real yeah. thing. No, I laid out last time. Yeah, you were real comfortable last time. But you're doing us a big favor, too, coming on here. Oh, you no. one of our being a big guest early in the pod. No, it pretty much put you guys on the map. You think so? Mm, I would say Delaney put us on the map. And okay. then Jalen Ramsey put us in the map. You can go back and look at the content and the hits yeah. and the number of. Yeah, you but I'm, proud of you, I'm proud of you guys. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, proud. Your, your social media manager's proud, doing big things proud now. Proud Papa. Yeah. How do we even start this I thing? Don't water? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what do I get? Do, is, give do you me want some, something? would love some water. Yeah, we'll yeah. get you water. Yeah. Some body armor. How's the summer been? So Should we go to Canada? So no, I'm going to Canada August 4th. I'll be there until September 10th. Sweet. And so we're going, we have a couple stops for training camp. One thing in Boston. So we're going, I think we're going to Raiders and what Chargers. You, what do you got in Boston? The Barstool Awards. Your yeah, boys, we, we're up for an award right now. What are you guys up? Best newcomer? Who knows, man? I think maybe most pod. Rookie. Probably. Could be. Yeah. Best average pod. You know what you're up for. I actually, no, we know we, we, really, we don't. really don't. I know we know we're presenting an award, yeah. but we're also up for an award. What are you presenting? We don't know. No, we don't know anything. That's kind of how things roll. Yeah. It's not planned out, huh? No. You don't have you know a, how it no is. script? No, you know how it is. You just go off the cuff, dude. Good. Shoot it, from the hip. Baby's getting big. Yeah, she is, isn't she? It's funny. This is exactly how I thought this spot would start. Didn't it's she such a, Our relationship with you is so unique, and Will and I would talk about it all the time, because you do a, a great job of being a head coach and then pivoting. Which one do you want? And then being a boy. What's the best flavor? Mm, okay. Guess it's better warm. <laughs> it's room temp. <laughs> room temp. It goes down better that way. Been but what were you, what were you saying? Chug. I was saying that this is exactly how the pod, I thought the pod would go. Like at the beginning of this pod, just like getting into the whole thing. Because Vrabe, like we've talked about in this pod before, 2018 Vrabes and 2023 Vrabes are two totally different Vrabes. No. L- a little more rough around the edges at first. Trying to, trying to implement a culture. So at first, bullets were flying. There was bunch of smoke out there. We're just trying to figure out who the new guy is around here. Knees bent head on a swivel. On a swivel. And so and so you're thinking, okay, this coach is an asshole. I'm excited to see how you're going about. And then, but like... No, I get where he's going. As the the relationship grew, it's like, you do a good job of doing this. You kind of, hey, you you, like in, out, out, like you're chirping and then you're being a boy and then you're yelling. It it is a tough place to navigate. Is that is that Just from this perspective of being a head coach mm-hmm. and having played and having kids that are 23, 21. I mean, it's like what's enough, what's not enough. Still got, you know, I think the one thing that I've tried to do is make connections, but still hold guys accountable. Mm-hmm. However, that may be. Did you, you find know? that difficult when you first started? Like when you uh, you're at Ohio State first, right? Yeah, different. I mean, different mm-hmm. in college. I mean, it's it's much different, but I don't think I coach any differently at college than I did in Houston or here. I think it's just grows. Just like your guys' podcast has grown, there's more responsibility, there's more appearances, there's more that you do the, the higher up that you go. Yeah, and Obviously, you are you become a head coach when you came to the Titans. Like, what do you feel like you've learned the most since that first year? Uh, that you can plan for a lot of things, but there's some things that you can't plan for. Um, there's always going to be distractions there are always going to be things just being flexible being willing to say hey you're going to have to move away from your script you know i think some of our best practices were the ones where we just went out there and we put the ball down said call it 
first and 10, second and three, third and eight, whatever it is. Now we're down in the red zone or it's fourth down. I mean, it, those are where you, you know, that's where the game's played. So I think realistically, it's just being, being able to adjust and, and be flexible. With that comes awareness. Do you feel like there are moments or situations in that first year that brought that awareness up that's like, I got to do it a little bit differently the next time this happens? I mean, I think that that happens whether you're in the first year, the second year, the, you know, every year. You're always trying to learn. You're trying to figure out what's best for the team, you know, what's good for practice, what's good for certain player, veteran guy, young guy. I mean, I don't think you ever have any the answers. You know, you try to hire a staff, you try to make changes and, you know, try to get everything perfect and then, and then go out and practice. But I don't know if there was any, like, one moment. I mean, hell, our first game, we, it was an eight-hour game mm-hmm. in Miami. Two two-hour rain delays. They didn't, <laughs> that was didn't, brutal. Didn't cover that in the, uh, in the coaching manual. So, I mean, we wouldn't remember Matuzak and, and, and Akers were going up on the third deck to, to buy, like, mini pizzas. Were they really? Guys were starving. You went night. Brutal. You went night nice. Yeah, you didn't I, remember yeah, I did that. Go game. Night night. Up and out. <laughs> I was out there. Night, night. Knees bent head on a swim. I was not on a swim there. But dude, I was. So you saw me. I was finishing the ball. I, but ever since that day, finished longer than a guy with the ball. You're like, whoa. Yeah. I'm all set. <laughs> yeah. All set. That sleeping. was blindside. That was when they put the blindside block in. Yeah, I think the next year is when they implemented the rule. I'm. I, I think they implemented the it after, after the game. <laughs> after the game, they're like, they're hey, like we're, we're not doing that anymore. That was a wild situation. That, that whole game in general, because then Delaney broke his leg also. We literally go out. I think it was like two minutes left in the first half when they had a rain delay. So we literally went out and had to do two minutes. Two minute. To start. It's like, We were in there oh, practicing, fuck. walking through in the locker room. Yeah. We literally, I've never been a part of a game where you're like, all right, just take your pads off. Everyone relax. We're not going anywhere for a while. I it, know. Was it, was a, it, it was wild. And it was halftime. Then we went back out. Mm. Another, Another storm out. delay. It was nuts. Yeah, that was, a, that was a wild. What you bring up, uh, speaking of the rules, over the last few years, what rules, what rule have you hated the most that's been implemented? What rule? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think that the rules have always, you know, I don't know if I hate any of them. I think that, uh, you know, you talk about defenseless receiver. Like, I think the players have changed their behavior, I think, for the good. I mean, you look at some of those NFL film clips, even from, like, 10 or 12 years ago, and you're like, my God. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I give credit to the players for changing their behavior, lowering their target. Uh, I think that's a good rule. Um, You know, we'll see where the kickoff thing goes. We'll see how that, you know, adjusts, and does it affect, you know, the ability to return football. I think the teams will still, you know, I'm sure you have a, a take on it being, you know, we we all played special teams, so kickoff still needs to be a part of the game, and and I think it will. But when you look at the analytics and the numbers, just trying to do something to to help the the players and, and the safety of it. So I don't know if there's any been any rule changes that I've that I've hated. What about as a fucking football player guy, not as a head uh, coach? Early two thousands, dude. Yeah, I remember there was one year where I don't know if it was twenty twenty, but. Because you always do a good job of like coaching within the rules and be like, guys, I fucking, I trust me, I hate it, I disagree, blah, blah, right. blah, but this is how we have to do it. I want to say it was maybe, maybe D-backs or people coming in to, to, to cut, yeah, like cut lineman on pullers or something yeah. like that. That was kind of like, but man, what the fuck got, you want these guys to do? Yeah, you know? but, but what, I mean, you look at that and that hasn't affected the plays. I mean, these tackles, these guys can still get out on the edge, but the tackles didn't like when those guys would go low at them. And so what it's done is it's forced them to slow down, mm-hmm. right? Because if they keep going, Taylor, then the DB just sticks and avoids, yeah. right? We talked about that. We saw Christian Fulton stick and, and dip underneath and make a play. But then if the lineman comes to balance and just gets in the way, well, then the collision isn't that bad. So I don't think it's affected. The, really, the one that's affected it has been on those, those slip screens where you yeah. used to have to go out there and throw and you had no chance. Yeah. You're and just trying to get in the way. Throw and, at the guy. Yeah. He... And so they're really those aren't haven't been really good plays around the league, and I mm. think probably that one has been the only one that's affected has been affected by that. The toss cracks, the perimeter runs, and some of those screens. You know, hell, it's kept Ben it kept Ben's uniform clean for a couple of years because he'd just go out there and belly flop the front and be, side be, every it, single time. It, it'd be just grass stain out there on the front side of those screens. So that one, and I think Taylor will will agree that 
if you didn't go out there and, and throw at the guy, you just weren't going to be able to get the, the DB on that. No, especially with all that space. Yeah, right. If they're up a little bit more like path screen or something mm -hmm. like that, it's a little bit easier, but they're out there. Yeah. So truck I mean, or trailer or something like that. And we coach to them. We coach to whatever the rules are and try to try to help everybody and take use them to our advantage. <clears throat> we, uh, that's a good job. That's a good yeah, job. You're doing Getting a good job that. pivoting. That was, you're, you're very well spoken. Well, like, dice it up a little bit. Let's go. Yeah, as a All football right. fucking player guy, which rule do you hate the most? Give me fucking three options. Like, I don't even, you know what I mean? Like, what are we talking Targeting? about? Quarter, uh, quarterback being, being, being Targeting around. Was probably a thing for you as a player that was like hard to. Being around the knees of the quarterback? Yeah. When you're rushing, being a pass rusher? We pay these guys $50 million. But at the time, you weren't paying nobody. You were a player. We, we, you were rushing the pass. Yeah, I wouldn't have liked that one. You would have hated it. You know what I mean? Like, but, like, you got to protect these guys. What do you want to see all the court? Nobody's going to watch. You told me to give you hurt. options, brother. Okay. And I tell you, I don't mind the quarterback being protected below the knee. And, above, you know what I mean? Outside the pocket, where are we going on a quarterback? Low. Thank you, Taylor. You're for, welcome. Yo. Just Thank you for coachable. Thank you for paying attention in the team meetings. Yeah, yeah. I, the, hey, we got to talk about the team meetings. Like, that was your first year, the most terrifying shit. Because you, do you listen to defensive questions? That's and it. You're all in the same meeting. Nuts, dude. Did you happen to listen to any of our uh, Kevin Byard episode? No. I haven't listened to any of it. I only listened to mine. That's. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's part Have you had of, any other ones? Of course. Yeah. No, we all. I've heard a couple hundred <laughs> since then. Oh. Yeah. I was referencing the KB one because we were talking about how much, you know, it sucked that first year playing for yeah. Braves compared to years, years it later. It suck. It was just, it you sucked. weren't used to it. That's, that's your perspective. But I'm, we're saying as sucked. players, we go in the locker room, we're like, this fucking guy, tough. Fair. Yeah. No. Well, are you saying yes, my, my opinion's fair? Or are you no, saying but fair? But fair. Okay. Like. Or no. I wouldn't say you were extremely fair. In, tw in 2018, I here's what I thought. If that's I could, his words. Hey, that's his words, coach. You know what I'm saying? Give the bag. Get the bag. No, don't get the bag. Don't get the bag. Don't the bag. bag. Jack, bitch, you, you work for us. Don't get the bag for. I'll show you how fair I am. I brought the rest of your stuff in February, February 27, 2023. Taylor was thanking the Titans for bringing their yeah, stuff. Yeah, I do appreciate that. I brought that. the rest of the stuff. Can I open this? You, there's nothing in there. It was just a prop. <laughs> just, I needed to just put it together. Oh, there'd be something nice in there, like a gift basket or something. on the top of it. Yeah. But 2018, <clears throat> here's my perspective looking at it zoomed out. Great. New coach, head coach, implementing the culture he wants to implement, came from the Bill Belichick tree of the Patriots. You're walking into a very loose... Were we young then? Was 2018 we were a young team? I mean, no, no, you had, you had vets. Yeah, we, we had some vets young. in there. No. It wasn't too young, but a good mix. And I feel like Delaney was in there. In college, uh, a head coach comes in. He's weeding out the week immediately. He's cutting the grass to find the snakes. Trimming the fat. Yeah. And I feel like that's where you went. <clears throat> At what point did you think, okay, I, I've got a good grasp of this culture? Because here. I respected absolutely, and I've said this before on record, that nobody complained, nobody bitched. You know, we got buy-in from from Jarrell, from Rack, all those guys on defense, um, and, and from the guys on offense. So Delaney, I mean, it was like, it, it was easy for me because it was like these guys, you know, I said they're going to hold the best players the most accountable, and we tried to do that, and I thought it sent a good message, and guys didn't bristle, guys didn't like, because you, I think I tried to make it relevant to coaching. It wasn't just a, to bitch, to bitch, like mm -hmm. Taylor, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get to the line of scrimmage. Whether Taylor wanted to get to the line of scrimmage, eventually he got got to the fucking line of scrimmage. But yeah. that was our like little pissing contest when we first got there. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, conflict before cooperation with you and me. But it was fine. Yeah, no, it worked out great. Great. Yeah, but it was tough that first year. What's it like coaching a guy like Taylor and then coaching a guy like Ben Jones? Well, I think I respect the one thing I have done is I've respect that there's a lot of different personalities and there's a lot of way to get your job done. And I have a great relationship with Taylor, great relationship with Ben. And, um, but I mean, hell, they're opposite as can be. I mean, it's like Taylor, I realized just Taylor wanted to bitch just to bitch sometimes because that's who Taylor was. But it wasn't like he never did the work. It wasn't like he didn't put the work in, it wasn't like he didn't run or lift or whatever. He just, like, okay, Taylor, we know you're here. You don't really have to tell us that you're here. We know you're here, but it was fine. And I, I didn't, 
<laughs> didn't have a problem. I mean, it was like we asked him to, to do something. He did it. He worked hard. He ran. He was at the front of the pack. You know what I mean? It was like, so I didn't, but that's who Taylor is. It's like we respected it and, you know, want to lift this way. Okay, yeah, you know, modify the workout. Who who gives a shit? Just get in the weight room. Was that always right? I mean, that's. No, yeah, that's, that's definitely, fair. that sounds about right. I, I bring up literally you and Ben, you're, you're sitting here. We were just talking about you. And then I think Ben, because you guys are very different. Yeah. So it's almost like figuring out, communicating with players when you're, when you're more so not as much the coordinator or position coach anymore, when you're the head coach and you, you probably have to maybe listen a little bit more versus being like, you know, just fucking do this or run to the head man if you want to fucking change something. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? I would always notice like, like if I'm a coach, I'm confiding in Ben a lot more than confiding in me. He, ben is like, as trustworthy as they come, as tough as they come, knows all the plays. Literally, he could, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, he could probably sit in a coach's meeting, an offensive meeting, and, and tell everybody what they're doing. But the, like, as he a center, just, you have to. Like yeah. an inside linebacker, you know everybody's job. You know what mm -hmm. where the front's supposed to be. You know what the coverage is supposed to be. I mean, the center has to know where everybody's blocking. I used to love when Keith would be in there and he'd ask, like, the left guard, the rookie left guard, what the right tackle has on 18 yeah. watch row. And I'm like thinking to myself, what fucking difference does it make? Ben's just going to tell everybody what to do. No question. Ben, B, like C, triple. Yeah. Man reach. Let's go. And then with like, but looking at that, Ben's no longer on the team. Like Brewer is a great football player. Correct. And you know, he's like, you said it yourself, tough as a $2 steak. Not the best guy at enunciating, a little more quiet than Ben was. Like, is that, is that something you've worked on during OTAs Well, with again, him? last year we went through a situation um, where on a short week going to, to Green Bay on the road, Brew had to play center mm -hmm. four days. And I saw saw him over the course of four days prepare, communicate, get those guys ready to go all the way up until we left the hotel from Green Bay. You know, those short weeks, you're mm -hmm. cramming in everything you can. And it was like, that's exactly what we're looking for. You're going to be different than Ben. You're going to lead differently than Ben. Mm. But we're going to need you to lead. Like, that's what the center has to do uh, in the offensive line. Brew is awesome, dude. Brew is Have awesome. you been around Brew? I mean, a little bit. Yeah. I, the, second, the second time, what was that, 2021? Yeah. He's just... Second stint? The second stint. But trying to work on a third stint right here. Yeah, the second stint when you, you know, you had to cut me. And I didn't hear. It's a number. And I didn't hear from it's you. It's a numbers thing. I didn't hear from we you. We brought either. you back. Yeah, but I never heard from you the day of the cut. Oh, you didn't we go to his you office back the next day. Yeah, but I never we heard from you. You didn't have the stones to bring your boy in and cut him. You were going to be in the meeting the next morning. We resigned you. I had to weigh my options. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> option A or option A. <laughs> <laughs> I had to weigh my when options. When you cut Will, you didn't bring him to the office or anything like that. I didn't get a phone call, uh, you know, like, hey, when would you like to? No, I got snipped, neutered. That's a real fashion way, dude. You've been it a couple of times. They probably thought, oh, this guy's got tough skin. He's been here. Yeah, time and time it, again. It's, just, it's just fucking For me, they had brutal. to massage me in. They were like, hey, we know this is going to happen. No, no, you, it's still you fucking were, tough, man. I didn't get coming cut. back. We brought you back, and then we elevated you after that. Yeah, yeah. Ravens game. Yeah. Speaking of cutting guys, Both. what's like the most awkward... Or is there a situation there was a guy like just livid, yelling, screaming, mad, or like a awkward situation when you're cutting somebody? I mean, this is, you know, that's is this is tough. We haven't been through it as a player. Um, you know, you go all the way through training camp. I mean, it's like you spend a lot of time with guys, even more so than regular season. Like the training camp is like long days. You know, and it's just like you know that things are gonna happen and you can only keep so many guys. And I think just you just try to put yourself in their position and try to be as respectful as possible and, you know, be as honest as you can. I think I've always tried to be honest. I think our organization has tried to be honest and say, you know, we're, we're, we would like to bring you back on a practice squad. Or there's been numerous times where we've said we're, we're probably not going to have a spot for you on the practice squad. And I think players at least appreciate the honesty um, so they know where they stand. But there's never been a guy that lost their mind? I mean... You don't have to say names, so, but have you no, have I mean, a couple it's experiences? Been fairly, you know, I mean, there's been, you know, in five years, there's been, you know, maybe one or two where, you know, gets a little dicey. Yeah, you know, called Jeb. <laughs> yeah. Jeb's not going to do shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all stretch. No. Yeah. It's, it hasn't been anything. I think the year before you got there, like 2017, 
Some guy got cut. He went to the sauna, pissed on the rocks in the sauna, and for weeks. No just, sauna. The, the sauna was, it just smelled terrible in there. So I think I was 12, and, I, and we had like an overnight stay at like the tennis and racket club back in Akron, Ohio, like mm -hmm. Friday night, like kids night or whatever. And they locked the doors until like six in the morning. So you like run around a racquetball courts or firing the, you know, racket balls at everybody. And so I remember in the sauna and some dude pissed in the sauna and the, the instructor came in, big meathead. And he wouldn't let us leave the sauna until, and I'm like, listen, look. I'm fucking fat and I'm sweating and it's midnight. You need to own up to this shit because we're, he kept us in his sauna. Like we're just like withering Dying, away smelling it. until the dude finally said, it was me. We're like, thank God. And like, we all went rushing out of the sauna. What an embarrassing situation for that guy to sit there with a bunch of kids and be like, I, you I'm the you one that pissed. The with him? No, I mean, I think he was like, he was probably older. You know I mean? I was like, you're still 12. 12 like, yeah. Awkward 12. 12's a tough year. Yeah, 11, you know, 12, Vrave, is just Vrave, you, know you know, time. you know, Vrave go, growing up in Ohio, like Vrave's got some stories. Mullet, there's no question. Oh, yeah. Mullet, rock the mullet. It was. What was it like being a dad having 12, 13 year olds finding themselves? You know what their, uh, you know what their search history looks like on the Explore page. Yeah, it's like Jen, like three, four, five, six knocks. Like if yeah. the door's locked, why is the door locked? We know why the door's Long locked. Long showers. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking, that's a tough deal. Yeah. It you, sounds like quarantine. It sounds yeah. like quarantine. You ever, you ever yeah. caught yeah. one of them? You ever caught one of them tugging it? Hell no. <laughs> I, I would know. deny it if I did. Yeah? So you did? Wants so to, did. No, I did. <laughs> no. 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 It's definitely Carter. No. I mean, I've, I've, I've caught Carter, but not Carter tugging it. Yeah, not not <laughs> not, not in the middle somebody, of the deal. Somebody else was probably tugging it. Oh, <laughs> hey, dad has got to be as a dad. You're kind of like, hey, nice, but at the same time, you're like, you can't do that in this house. Yeah, no, you can't do that. Here. I had one of those situations with my dad one time. Where he it called was, you? Yeah, like there was nothing like like that. We were kind of just like kissing on my bed, and her shirt was off. I was kissing. like a senior. Like you, we were like, just kind of kissing in the bed. He went into he went into the mic. Was like kind of kissing. <laughs> You know, I was just tearing up my denim. I was kind of like, you know. And then all of a sudden, I hear loud footsteps. And I thought, oh, fuck, it's over. And then my dad walked in. The covers he looks at the girl bit. and goes, you, get out. She gets out, and he's like, hey. You talk about the walk of shame. He, oh, she was rattled for days. But he kind of like, low-key gave me a fist bump. It was like, you should have been working out. You should have been training for football. <laughs> like, gave me a whole talk of how to stay focused on ball and right all move, that. Right move. It's kind of the deal, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode yet again for another ad read, and that ad read is one of our favorites. One of our well, favorites. We don't like to play favorites. We don't we, like to play yeah, favorites. That's true. So that's I take true. that back. But also, but these fucking guys have been here for a long, long time, time. And that is Georgia Boots. Georgia Boots are designed for the longest shift and the toughest jobs. The core of Georgia's messaging relies on delivering boots that are as comfortable as they are tough. Boots that can that you can wear from your work to the bar. Blue collar comfort right out of the box. Mm, whether you're working on the front line, fixing that shelf in your closet, or grilling out back, these Georgias are the best boot for the job. Georgia boots are designed for rugged, demanding work mm. environments and are built to last, making them ideal for workers mm. in various industries. Georgia boots are designed with comfort in mind, featuring... Cushioned insoles and supportive technology for all day comfort. Listen, use code BUSSIN. Repeat that for him. Repeat that. Use code BUSSIN for 20% off at georgiaboots.com. Mm, back to this episode. We're back rolling. A little bit of technical difficulties. That kind of is nice though. A little nostalgic feeling because when we first started with Brave on the Bus, we always had stuff like that. What? Train stuff going, going on. Train, train going, going by. by. Oh, Mike's the gravel going out. road. Nerves. Yeah. Nerves. You guys have uh, upgraded. This is nice. Thanks, we're man. a better spot now. Yeah. Things have been I rolling. I forget that the last time, yeah, you were like one of the first five episodes. Was it first right? five? First seven, eight, one of them. That was, Early. I will tell you, that was like a breath of fresh air when we asked you to come on. You were like, yes. Because mm -hmm. that's like the biggest nervous thing is when you asked. I was like, absolutely terrified. Yeah. We had Travis Kelsey on last week. And he was talking about, when he started his podcast, how... Andy Reid would feel. And then, then Andy Reid went on. He felt a whole lot better. And that literally was a, a massive, like, win for us when you came on. 
Obviously, yeah. you you boosted the numbers. I hate giving you flowers. I know. He you knows. He knows. He did. Well, you did say <laughs> you about did, fucking time. Yeah, you did say you would cut Dead. off your dick for a Super Bowl. Now, yeah. if we're going in order, that year we went to the AFC Championship. Between the Baltimore Ravens game and the Chiefs game, they asked you about cutting your dick off, and you said no. And so, do you feel like you ruined you our chance for the I Super Bowl? That or whatever. I don't you know. I think it was, it was just you, 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 you implied there was a joke. I was excited. I got caught up in the moment mm -hmm. of the pod, and I was, like I said, I was just trying to give you guys some clicks. You did. Hey, you, you did. really did. That was nice. <laughs> I want to say, like, because Jalen came on after him, right? I can't remember. Uh, I believe he did, but then. Let's just say the bar was set. Yeah. You Put did, it that way. Yes. And the then it gets beat. Set. It gets beat. I'm okay. Get a little with it. Yeah, how did you feel um, when we had started that, the podcast? At first, because it was fairly newer, especially for players doing it then. Because you guys had just paid Taylor a boatload of money. Appreciate that. Part. I mean, I think we just said, just can we not do it during the season or whatever it was? I don't know. I mean, we, we just did have a sit down conversation about it. Yeah. I don't know if it was like, me that fun, came to you or. Because the Delaney one popped off and that was like a, an IV story that he told. And it's like, oh, Titans. Yeah, because Todd got room, IV, whatever. And so yeah. you had to make an example. Uh, about like, hey guys, they can take anything that you say and make it into a, right. a report. Right, and it's just this is a long conversation, and wherever it goes from here. Mm -hmm. But it, it, the point was that the players it, is it gets going to get spliced up and it's going to get cut and edited by these these guys, and you know who knows what's going to come out. You know he wanted to say something. I did. No, he wanted, he wanted to say something. I did. I want to say slap dicks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But you you didn't think you know, you didn't have much of a thought on it at all. You didn't really care. No, I didn't care. No, I mean I was like thought it was gonna fall flat on its face, but I you know I didn't care. <laughs> I really had no idea what was gonna happen. I mean, I was like, let's see how this goes. But I didn't care. I don't think I had like a. I mean, it gave me like it was like free ammunition. I could just give you guys shit yeah, at that any was point. Tough. That was yeah. I was yeah, yeah. Literally the first year, every team meeting, I was like, man, I hope something doesn't come out about the pod. I I was just praying about it. Man, you you took your time. You I mean, yeah, you did it a few my, times. Yeah, it was. I didn't want to like wear it out. I wanted to make sure that yeah. it was worth it. Mm -hmm. The second time around, I feel like I was more nervous about it for the second stand because well, I'd have to you had in. been you had been going heavy on social and then it was like I was at the Raiders looking my before. clicks and I came back. I got you pretty good that that time. God, you're talking about your little presentation. Yeah, presentation. But you would social watch social media though, let's, presentation. Let's, let's not get it twisted now. You watched you watched all the content. No, no, I didn't. You would come in the next yeah. day, hey, Will, how was the Wendy's I burger? You, I have people that do that for me. No. no. And Dude, here's why. That is a big, hang on. No. No. There's no so way. Here we go. Here we go. Here, you know how much, how many people we have on staff that come do that? Come on. Vrabes? Vrabes. Here's you what I'm going to say. Your office. Hang on. I got this. Go I, got, I got this. Oh, okay. So, Look at the it. first year. I guess he's in charge. <laughs> Listen, brother. Don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. I guess he won the power. Just because I have a real. who won the power struggle. No, I have a real life example. Are you giving it back to him? I'm just, no, I'm fucking. Well, I'm make sure the boy is. Don't let him. He's getting you right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Just do you. You're 10. You don't have the balls to stand up. Don't Hey, Team Keys, you saw in the group chat. Don't let him get too confident. Don't let him get too confident. But we were we about to play Washington, and LaFleur had me in a meeting. When they were breaking down like what the defense is doing, because Minuski was still the DC, yada yada yada, and Vraves was in the meeting, and um, we're like sitting there. Blaine was next to me, Vraves on my left, and there were um, I won't say any names, but Vraves showing me like a couple head, like a couple stories. Like, look at this motherfucker, dude. Yeah. You know this shit is so. You know, the, either this ain't true, or you know it ain't going down like that. And he's like, he shows me his phone, and I see that my man's on Instagram. Mm. So from that moment, I always knew like, Vraves, he's a. He's a tier three, man. He's a little closet. He, he, he likes the content. You surf the web, and that's okay. I, I don't like the content, but I like to know what's going on. And you yeah, also like... That's you, a little bit of a different story than you were just saying, because you said you have people for it. Well, yeah. Will is showing real, real world experience. Because he being. poured his fucking heart and soul into that story. I, at least I got to give him a little credit. Like, <laughs> first, is it not true? The first blog I wrote, you take a screenshot. Can't wait to read more from the shitter. I did. I mean, I yeah, just yeah. like to know... Any so of my, I can have any, some ammunition. Any of my tweets, if I get out of line a little bit with Twitter or I get too much I on do, the moral, like I'll, on the moral, like, oh, what are you, the fucking... 
Yeah. The moral police. No, you said something. I remember. Uh, it was something about we like can go uh, back through. Tell me about the Dar Darren Bates thing. Your your mindset after. Uh, well, that was Darren that thing. was that was more so. Di that was like a different example, and I was fucking terrified for my life because I had taken the video of DB in the locker room. We had the linebacker room, like if you were injured and you were like doing walkthrough but not practicing. Oh, like you yeah. Kinda, you kind of know what you're trying to do as a player. It's like, I see you trying to take these walkthrough rests, but you're yeah. not actually trying to fucking get in there and practice. So you would essentially, I bought this neck brace right. off Amazon that you'd have to wear around if you just did the walkthrough and not the practice. And so when DB had his yellow jersey on for a walkthrough, that when he came back in the locker room, I like threw it out. I'm like, hey, you got to put this on. And I was like filming it in the locker room. Vrabe hits me up like, Maybe nine o'clock at night. It was a little bit later. I'm sitting there. I'm watching right something. before bed. Yeah, and he's like, uh, he sent me. He sent me the link, and then he goes, "You think this was smart? Putting out essentially like you know something injury related on the internet? Media rules, guidelines, yeah. not and, rules. Yeah, guidelines. guidelines. I might have asked something back. Just feel it out. But just like my heart's beating right now, my heart was pounding out of my fucking chest, dude. Yeah. Like God damn it. Like he's going to. You know, I'm going to be an example tomorrow. Like, I don't know if he's actually, you know, in, like, mad or not like that. Because Right, that's the whole, like, in, exactly. out, I like, would, Taylor, I like that. However, Taylor job. was doing that yeah, thing with stop the, and come stop up, and but come Because hey, yeah. our dynamic was always, we were always boys outside of the season. And anytime I'm your player in the season... Completely it's like, different. It's just like there's like yeah, a, we had that uh, breakfast. Spring? Remember that breakfast at the Renaissance? Yeah, you got me the full continental. Yeah, you bought that continental, continental breakfast for me. Yeah, I had some Cheerios. Eagle. Yeah, fresh of fruit. I remember that he cereal. Took, he took me around town, the cities. Like, so this is like uh, he was trying to court you. To Recruiting come visit. free agency yeah. visit. Free agency visit. Nice. He's courting me around, like you know the Prez and the playoffs. It's it's popping off on Broadway. Like it goes down here. Eight, he's, eight thirty. You know, he's hitting Quick his continental fifteen minute recruiting spiel. Yeah. You do the same thing for DeAndre Hopkins. He go. <laughs> <laughs> don't it still, hurts, don't do it still hurts just as much. Um, but yeah, there was always that dynamic. So when he sent me that text, his I don't hear a lot out of him unless there's just something funny that Vray wants to come over and like say that in his mind he's telling me as a joke. But in my mind, I'm thinking like I got to make sure I'm a, a, a player in front of him versus the person he probably thinks that I could be mm. like behind the phone yeah. or something like that. So he come up and like tell me a joke and I'm, I, then I realize like, I'm like, you know, I laugh or whatever, but I'm just thinking, man, this motherfucker plays an insane level of mental warfare with me. Yes. So then when he texts me, I don't know if he like thought it was funny or he thought like, no, I'm actually pissed off, but I know you guys, like I know, you know, you just didn't know. So I was terrified to go to the meeting the next day and he yeah. did. I mean, of course I see things that you guys put out there. And then I think when there's really good ones and they're really funny ones, then I'll take the Twitter once every six months to... Yeah, you do grace us with your presence. Throw, throw one back across. Yeah, I feel like your Twitter just exists to body me or will. That's it. We've been getting your followers up, though. You're welcome. I don't. I Because at first you had it. You had the daddy's giving you clicks. I'm giving you views. Don't use my name yeah, for followers. You guys would tag me and all this shit. I'm like, stop tagging me. But now that it's. Get it's, off the tiff. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's shifted to where it's like, Will. He's where it's like, no, no, <laughs> we got a fucking, strengthening. we got to fucking, we got to get this now man it's down. Now shifted to where we can shout him out and help get, you know, yeah. our favorite head coach up some followers. We're, we're helping followers. the Titans. We're helping the Titans from a distance. Yeah. But DeAndre Hopkins. Is it official? Is it official? It, not official. But he's coming. I, I would imagine that as soon as he signs, it'll be official. I mean, yes. Yeah, like, he's coming. <laughs> it's officially official, unofficially it's official. Unofficially I think we've agreed to terms mm -hmm. was in there, principle. Was there, we talked about it on the bus, was there a fear because of how Julio Jones worked out getting a guy like DeAndre? To different players, obviously, Man, different I, people, different mindsets. Again, anytime in free agency, you know, I think, you know, you, you have to have some working knowledge of the player mm -hmm. and who they are as a person, who they are in the building, whether you know, one of your coaches coached them, whether you knew them, because just for the million reasons that we talked about with the culture and what's it going to be like and what the expectations are, you know, sometimes free agency is great. Sometimes, you know, it's not. So there's always things that you, you know, you have to be careful of, you know, that just spend a lot of time with these guys before you draft them, whether it's the combine, zoom, 
spend a day with them here in town where you bring them in or you go work them out on their campus. And you just don't have that sometimes in free agency unless you've been with them. So you know, we've got some coaches on staff that have been with, with Hop, me included. So and we obviously feel good about it. Yeah. He's obviously a stud player, but what, was there any like hesitation given some of the high profile free agents you've signed in the past that didn't necessarily work out? Um, and then do you have to basically de-recruit yourself from that thinking so that way you can probably... Yeah, no, I mean, it. I don't think whatever happened in the past with another player is going to apply to to this particular player. And if things come up, we'll we'll have to, you know, work through them. But, I mean, we wouldn't have signed him or wanted to sign him if it, we weren't confident that, you know, he'd help us. Did you talk to him about blocking? Um, We've seen the Houston tape. I can see in the team meeting now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that... What are we uh, doing here? Again, you, the you get what you emphasize. Off? You get what you emphasize. Yeah. And and I think that, you know, uh, I'm confident that he'll do what we ask him to do. And certainly that's that's not going to be his number one job is the, is the block. It's not going to be Traylon's number one job. It's not going to be you know, Kyle's number one job. So, you know, we, we have to do a better job. I can coach speak you to death, but you know, we got to protect the quarterback so that we can, you know, throw the ball efficiently. You don't have to throw it 50 times to win, but you got to throw it efficient. Yeah. A lot of noise saying that the Titans are in a rebuild year. Um, I, I, did, I don't ever think that in this league. I, I don't. I'm never going to believe that. I think that you know, our guys will prepare, our guys will fight, our guys will, you know, I think we got a chance to beat anybody. How do you feel like this roster is different this year than has been, like, you know, well, I mean, we had to move on from year. veterans. I mean, you get to a point where that's what happens in this league. You know, whether it's me getting traded to Kansas City, you know, going into my 13th year or um, having to move on from from some players or making decisions. I mean, that's, that's how this thing goes. And everybody's aware of it. Um, so I think that's the, the first thing. You know what I mean? We've got some veteran players that I've been with for, you know, five years that I've been here that, that we had to move on from and, and other players as well. So I think that's probably the biggest, you know, will be the biggest difference, but every year's there's always change every year. When you were, uh, when the whole AJ Brown thing was going down, mm -hmm. he was in contract negotiations. You had a press conference saying, as long as I'm the head coach, AJ Brown will be on this team. And then all of a sudden he's obviously on the Eagles. Sure. What, what was that? Well, I mean, obviously as the head coach, you, you, want every player that you think can help you win on the team and certainly had a great relationship and still have a relationship with AJ. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes in the business of professional sports, you know, things, things go a different direction and that's, that's where they went. Happy for AJ, happy for his family. And, uh, you know, we got compensated and now we'll have to, you know, Keep doing it without them, just like we tried last year. What's the war room like in a situation like that? When that night is unfolding and happening, obviously they have you know cams in there. They got you, they try and capture reactions, yep. but what's it like, like in that kind of situation? When no, I mean a lot of those oh, conversations. You want to you want to put some ice on that or something? You all right? I, tendinitis. Yeah, I should have brought my knee sleeve. That um, the uh, new like the monarchs, man. You got to be ready to go at any moment. You got some wide feet, brother. Yeah. And pizza feet. Um, so, uh, but a lot of those conversations oh, go on. season out here. Some of those go on before, like, you're on the clock, right? So, you know, we traded whenever we traded this year. And, you know, you had kind of have conversations. And, you know, that's, um, those don't just happen in the, in the 12 minutes or 10 minutes that you're on the clock. A lot of those times it's, you know, talked about before and you know ultimately once they were on the clock you know they they, they made the deal what's the uh do you have any more on no, AJ? i, I want to like i want you to take me in that war room like what, what was the back and forth do you remember like their first offer who called who um i would say that everybody calls everybody in this league two weeks leading up to the draft yeah i promise you coaches will talk Coach starts at the combine. I think GMs will start calling each other. So to say, like, somebody called somebody, I, I don't ever buy that because they all, you know, are talking about, hey, you know, 
you're willing to move up, you're willing to move back, and then you just start trying to, you know, figure out where things may go or players or draft picks. And then, you know, there's conversations all the way up to the draft. And then it's ultimately it's, you know, if we like the deal, we'll call you when we're on the clock. If, uh, does it usually happen where if the Titans are on the clock, are you guys more likely to receive calls or send out calls? Well, I think it's hard to send out calls when you're on the clock because then you're probably, you know I mean? Then, then you're pretty much, I don't know what kind of value you're going to get. Yeah, you just ref- do you, you refer just have to back? look and see what's on the board and see, you know, what somebody's willing to come up and, and give you for a pick. Mm. All right. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. if we're sitting there at, you know, 57 or whatever, and somebody has a player, you know, they'll call a couple out. Like, hey, if our guy's there, would you guys be willing to, to move back? Sure. You know, and then if they don't call, you assume that you're, you're they're the player that they wanted got picked, you know, and then it's like, well, who are you taking? Well, we're not, you know, maybe we want the same guy. Yeah. And you play that game. So that's kind of how it works, you know, in those later rounds. When you were leading up to the game against the Eagles, obviously you probably had a big emphasis on they have a great receiving core. They have a great offense across the board. When you get in the game and you see AJ doing what AJ is doing, is there a part of you that's like, man, good for him? Uh, you, maybe I mean, not that. Maybe not right then and there. Yeah. Fuck no. You know what I mean? But um, Cause they I try touchdown. to look. Yeah. I mean, I try to look back and see, you know, that game was a one score game and, and we jump off sides in the red zone and, and we get pushed back and we don't, you know, finish the drive off and then it just kind of snowballed from there mm-hmm. you know the quarterback got hit and you know fumbled and you know we couldn't do anything to stop him on, on big plays and but i don't know if i looked at it right then and there i i wouldn't say i'm i'm happy for aj but not certainly that that day he scored a touchdown they yeah. called it back not yeah. that and day. then he did another one yeah i mean i'm sitting there like holy shit dude this guy's just on a on a mission you know how aj is like he he only needs like someone to say something a little off, let alone getting traded to feel like all right, I'm about to go crazy on these guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine that knowing him, that maybe there was, you know, motivation. Again, it's negotiations in pro sports. Like you've been through it. It's sometimes they they go in different directions. Mm. Let's just After that, that game, the transition starts to happen for John gets fired. You guys bring in Rand. Can you talk about that transition as the Titans were moving on from a GM that had been here with you the whole time uh, to finding somebody else? Yeah, I mean, it was a great process. I mean, it was an inclusive process. Um, brought in a lot of great candidates. Uh, interviewed some, some people in-house that had been here. And then, you know, ultimately um, went with Rand. And uh, I thought Amy made an amazing decision and it's been awesome to work with. Brought in some great guys, brought in Chad Brinker and Anthony Robinson, you know, so continue to communicate, continue to talk, uh, work through the spring. You know, I thought it was, the spring was really good. I thought we got a lot of stuff done. I thought, you know, our ability to work through the draft was really good. So just looking forward to see where we go here in training camp. Was it weird moving on from a GM in the middle of the season? I mean, we all work for somebody, you know what I mean? And so it's like, I've got to, I I support this organization. I support Amy. John hired me, you know what I mean? He was partly responsible. Ultimately, Amy had that final decision, but John was a general manager when I got the job here. So a ton of respect for him and the job that he did. Um, You know, and I think we all wish we, you know, wouldn't happen, but that's again we we're in professional sports and we know what we signed up for. When uh, you're looking at a situation during the season after the When did you guys get so serious in all this shit? Well, we had like, fun. We've been having fun, but there's have more also fun. Well, there's, we'd there's be able a, to have more have fun if you fucking come on once a year, but you hold us hostage every now and then to come on here. Right. By the way, for those of you listening, this is the only individual that's ever asked for money to come on this podcast but what kind of money did i ask for we, you wanted us to donate for charity for charity it and the turned, boys it, and the boys it, showed up yeah it turned into that but it's a, yeah you, you didn't you, turn into that was, you come, a, you come from a was, great school of fucking negotiating i yeah. know yes i know i'm here aren't i 
You are here. You guys are. stepped now, up. But you're talking about the Full seriousness and everything. Full game day attire, too, which no I question. think is awesome. I did we, this for you. Hilarious. Like the man just wait, like you're a cartoon. If people yeah. see you like this, you just show up on the bus like this. I did like this, this for you. I fucking love it. We get Coach Jersey out. Bring, bring, show him your gift. Year 10. Joey and the boys. Joey, Ooh. Jerome. Shout Jerome sewed boys, that on today. So, I wish you'd have put year for the last name. I thought you'd want no, people, I, uh, you know, they probably yeah, don't I recognize you. So they, they probably recognize Compton more than they do your face. Yeah. So, but anyway, <laughs> but to answer your question, okay. we get Coach Vray Bond, like, you know, go. Well, we have questions. We got we ask. Trust QB me. situation. Yeah, we can. Yeah. We can. You want to talk about can, that? We get to have fun. It's next on your list. No, I, that, I usually that's like, like a like teleprompter a, for that's dummies. That's a reminder. That's a reminder. We got a teleprompter for Taylor, dummies. There's four sure, things on there. We got to make sure we get the. Move. We got to make sure we get the the PFT, the ESPNs, like they're fucking yeah. hey, Mike Vrabel on bus with the boys. He talked about this. <laughs> yeah. We have, I mean? yeah, we have a job to do. Yeah, we have a job to do. Go ahead. We have a job to do. Uh, Green Bay game. Obviously, after the Green Bay game with Todd Downing, that happened. I'm not going to ask about that because we know the, like, the, the chronicle of Todd and how everything happened. But what was your process? Because obviously, Todd was let go. Like, it, when all that is happening, where does your mind go as far as like figuring out? Because some people are saying, hey, you got to fire this guy right now. Obviously, it happened after the season, like from inside the walls of the, of the facility. Yeah, I mean, I think that those things are... Two separate situations, Taylor. I mean, we we all needed to be better on offense. You know what I mean? We we all did. Our, our players and our coaches, starting with me, needed to be better on offense. Um, then again, the next the next situation that you're referring to is we're all responsible at some point for our choices, our decisions, you know, and things that we do. So um, I think those are two separate things. I didn't feel like the right thing to do was was to make a move, um, you know, at that point in time in the season. And, uh, you know, when, when the season ended, I, I, I felt like, you know, we needed to have some change in leadership on offense, and, and that's what we did. Uh, that was, I think that's enough serious stuff. If you were to coach for... No, that's okay. But, I mean, we all do. I mean, every day it happens. You know, we tr try to talk about the decisions that we make, mm -hmm. the people we, we sur surround ourselves with. Um and and what the habits that were create and trifecta. so the trifecta the trifecta what was the fun question you were about to ask oh it, do you remember the trifecta no did you did you sit in our meetings Vrabe, again we can go back in our text messages the very first time i impersonated you you texted that night like after that you forgot everything else i've said like oh at least i know you're paying attention even last year i came in it was tough because we're talking, the guy they I thought you would be a little, come a little stronger. What do you mean? I thought you had I a little bit more. Year? Yeah. I thought I was, I thought you I had to with an I well. heart Jeff Simmons shirt. Like I, that shit was funny. It was funny. Pulling up the tape. But it was funny. But I don't, I think he left a little bit out there on the field. Left a little meat on the bone? I think so. What do you think? I mean, uh, give me, give me an honest evaluation. Me personally. It was hard to top year one. Yes. It was. And last year it looked to me like you were just laying up too much. Like, you weren't, like, going for the fucking green. Well, in my defense, <laughs> hang on. I'll do this. Room. You're right. I think Will being in the training camp the whole time, the first time he did it, he knows know. all the repetitive things you've been saying. This time, he's kind of plopped into a situation getting some tape, and he's like, do I fall back on the same stuff? Because he knows, like, hey, Rape's a little bit different right. now. He handles stuff a little bit differently, so I'm sure. And new guys. Stretch is having to feed guy. me. Like, I'm like, hey, what are some... I don't know. That is learning that names and all that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a lot of like. I thought it was really good, and especially it, the new guys that didn't see the first time. I thought they, I thought they really loved it. Good. I don't know if it was really good. Right. It's one of those. You things. know what? I think, your best players to play their best. You know what I think yeah. pops it off? Ripping a jewel. Mm -hmm. Not doing that. Why not? We stopped. We when we we stopped. Yeah. He's, He's, he's saying he stopped. Now your hand's been shaking the whole time you've been in here. I know you haven't this stopped. My <laughs> this, 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 no this, this is my way. shooting hand. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> no we were shot. like, I came in the building. Very like, hey, do you, you want to be Coach Vrabel again? Like, coming to training camp. Yeah, but hold on. Back up even more than that. Like, a week Back and a half before that, 
I went into Brave's office and I was like, hey, we it's should so get Will. It's funny when he comes in expecting no and gets yes. No, you said, I'll think about it. Like, you gave me the whole, I'll think about it, Taylor. When I say like, I'll think about it, it's usually walked away. Yes. You're like, kind of like, you shoot I me to the door. No or I'll think about yeah. it. Yeah. Shoot me at the door, and apparently he calls you like right after that. He's like, it kind of has a low voice talking too. Like, hey, yeah. Taylor just left. And me off. the thing is, because Don't, of I the didn't show? want to tell him. Yeah. I wanted to say yeah. no, but then tell you to set it up. So before the rookie show, I'm like standing out there with Stretch. Like Stretch stands out there and waits for everybody to get in, and Stretch is like, get inside. And like usually we kind of hang out for a couple minutes, and he's like, go. And I'm like, why is this man pushing me so much? And I literally. I had no idea there was. You were me up. I got fired up when you walked in. I got fired. Walk in with the this. Like, yeah, hey, that's my boy. Yeah, the boys. <laughs> he's fucking stoked out there. He's like, this the guy I was telling you about. This the guy I was telling you about. Yeah, you about. The rookies did like a bad. It was an all right show. There's a couple of good it skits in there. Dunk. They did a bad busting with the boys bit thing. Right. And they did a couple of things where it was like, yeah, it's funny, I guess. Right. But and then you it, came. And you low key saved the show. So was it the best you've ever done? I agree with you, no. But you did save the show. It was that, it was that bad of a show. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was fun to do. I was nervous to do it because I'm like, I, hey, Stretch, you understand, like, I need actual material How from the inside. How sweet that new team meeting room. Sick, It's dude. amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we're back, like, putting it all together, like, going through film clips and everything else. Like, you could, you could storyline it this way, that way. We're making up. You know, I was like, hey, let me get an I Love Jeff Simmons shirt to wear in there. We have not We're about to go out. I was like, hey, Vrabe. That was the one thing I wanted to clear with him. I was like, can I, uh, can I get one of your jewels? Like, can I hit a jewel when I get out there? He's like, no. Dude, why <laughs> not? Because I didn't like, have him like, in there. Even, he's, he's like, Jen's saying it too. Like, why not? Why won't you let no. him? No. And he's like, I let you in the building. Like, enough, what you got enough, right here. Enough, enough. Yeah. Like, All right, man, whatever. whatever. That was a fun time, dude. I had a little lunch after. but Broke people, a little guys, bread. Yeah. yeah you guys were nice. trying to talk me out of the first time around. The very first one we did in training camp. The first I, time around crushed. I still laugh at that shit. Yeah, because I, I yeah, that one was like... Uh, I still laugh. Brave didn't know. Like, nobody kind of knew. And I, I had was, a couple vets who were like, hey, you sure you want to do this? This is, you know, but, if you're making fun of the head coach, I'm thinking, yeah, I guess you're right, but... That's what I'm going off of. Which, when I say last year was good, I'm going off of that shit, which I still laugh at that. That shit, the first time you did it. <laughs> bro. I don't, I don't even know what's happening. Weird. People are still laughing. Into your next bit. And it's yeah. like, whoosh, quiet down. He's going again. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. everybody's still laughing from the first joke. But you can't hear the beginning of the next one. And it's like, no, everybody, quiet down. He's keep going. Did you laugh during the show? Or were you I was in the corner laughing my ass off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I laughing. didn't see him. I'm, I know you came down and you said something like, 6 a.m., Will, or something yeah. like that. Like, you hit him with the, a little something. I was something. down there laughing in the corner. It was funny. Yeah, Pulling funny. up the old tape, too, JPP. Just to body me one more time. Yeah. God, that You know what I wish? to pee. Dude. No, he hit me with the double. Uh, I that thought he went one way, and he hit me another way. Spun me. That was when I got the Vrabel. We're paying you for this. I thought, oh, I'm done. <laughs> I, pa I pat you on the back. You shit my hand. Yeah, that was like those are the things that you're like, man. That camp. Like these poor boys. These rookies have no idea. When you go out to camp, that those bad plays when they go up, it's gonna the be good. The bad puts and the you in shit a blender. Get you beat. Puts you in a fucking blender. It's, it's okay. a terrible feeling. Those are just reminders. Yeah, I'll the tell you what. Those are yeah. teaching moments. But you know how the ego is in the NFL. Here's a, here's a, teaching teaching here's a funny teaching moment I look back on. There was an undrafted free agent. Maybe he was maybe an ACC school. I don't know. But it seemed like he got paid a little bit of a signing bonus. I believe he was on D-line at the time. I know this story. And Brave, you know, you're in there. You're hitting the tape post-practice. And everybody's asshole's a little tight. You're like, man, am I about to make this fucking tape? Like, you always hate it because you're watching tape. We're in the AC. It's easy. Like you, you just, you're the, you're at your most vulnerable. And this poor soul, like either didn't get his hands inside or something. He had been, he had put a few. No, he got the shit knocked out of him. He stacked he got okay, rolled up. He stacked a few bad reps or practices together. And Vrabe's like, you need to go home back to the hotel tonight and ask yourself if you even want to fucking play this game. What it was, I mean, at least, at least remember Dickerson. As yeah. much as you hated him because he fought every play, but he fought you. off the field. Right. Off the right. Field. But he, but he yeah. fought you. Yeah. And, and, he, and he wanted to be there. And he acted like whether he, he fought you. And the guy, he wanted to fight Taylor. He got into it after. And I was like, okay, at least we can work with something. At least we can right. coach that. You know what I'm saying? There's like a passion. There's a fire. Whatever. That's all we're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Hey, what did you do? What did you do? He's got were you drafted? Time. No. Right. So how did you act your first couple years to try to make it? Fucking grit and spit. Exactly. Prison rules, dude. Yeah. Find the biggest guy and fight him right away. Well, 
No? No, I'm not picking on, I'm not tr trying to pick a fight with Trent Williams. Well, no, you know but, I mean? but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hard. Like, that's what you have to do. Like, but this, the, what's funny, and you're just like the poor soul, like, cause Vrabe, if he gets you for some reps in a row to where he can put a mini highlight of you up, low light. Yeah, low light of you, you up. You make it sound like they're all negative. They're not all they're negative. Not all no, no, negative. no, no, they're not. They're not. This no, is us reliving no our fun remembers, moments. Coach no one remembers the losses. Correct. Hey, take yeah. it easy. Take it easy. Like, I know, but you're painting this picture just no, like... No, um, Braves, listen. You put the highlights up. You say, you. hey, we like this. This guy, that's good technique. So-and-so. Right. That's when you ran off over the ball, in 45 seconds. When you ran off the ball and you were strong with your backside hand, yeah. I put it on there. No, And I was very grateful for that. Yeah. But when you walked at a line of scrimmage, I put that on there. Yeah. Yeah. That is such a dumb rule, by the way. I feel like I can say that now. Why are we running the line of scrimmage? Because we want to... tempo. Yeah, it's tempo, but you can... Sets you, the tone. Look at everybody else in the Remember NFL. Remember that one game I said, we're going to fucking speed break 70 times in a row. Yeah. And that you're was, like, 70? I'm like, yeah, we're going to start conditioning right now. We didn't, but yeah, we, we didn't did sometimes. Obviously, we didn't do a speed break 70 times, but... But we did it like 30. That's the change of pace you want. Let the boys walk up to the line. It's a waste of energy. You see... Teams that have won the Super Bowl, every other team doesn't. Do they? They walk up to the line, they get set because receivers got to run Not out. Every team, we got time to get up there. You, and then you do a speed break. It changes the tempo. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's in a blender. difference between walking, sauntering, and and brisk walking to the line. Yeah, you, but they, you you're not saunter. asking. Yeah, but you're not asking you for a brisk walk either. You're walking. You, you, you want to when you're I first said, got here. Right. Like you wanted everybody, every, and then. While you're still getting set, we're snapping the fucking ball. When There's a pitcher a goes to the mound, he takes his time to throw Correct. some fucking heat. Get. I was getting ready to throw my heat. Exactly. But when we had the penalty, yeah. lost my shit. Jets game. No question. God damn. That was when I was like, fuck, now I have nothing to stand a leg on. That <laughs> pissed me off. Because we called a... He's fidgeting around in his stance. He's, uh, well, I don't really stop moving in my stance at all. Remember when you go... Key. Remember you'd go... Get him. And then Sarah came over and then said, Taylor, if you keep moving your hand and he jumps, I'm going to get you. And I, but I, I've said, never, I never got called. I know. And you did say, hey, you just keep doing what you want. But if you get called, that's on you. And then and you're done. great. And then you're done. But there was never a talk about jogging up to the line. There was no, nothing. That was, that was non-negotiable. Non but I'm saying, you get into you a lo I love how you September. Said, he did pay attention. Even though it didn't seem like he was, the non-negotiables, he knows what those Yeah, are. I'm secretly coachable. I know that. Not secretly. You, uh, Come on, well, Will. You're running out of time, line. Will. I'm doing God's work right we're now. Going into, we're going to a good time and a half here in a second. You think so? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa, you were whoa. late for three hours. Hey, you were you late. Didn't, you didn't read the fine print? Time and a half. That you were late, brother. That didn't start. That started when I sat down. Oh. We're going to time and a half, boys. You better yeah, hustle. Yeah, but then we hey, had hey, to brother, deal with you, the mic you, and hey, the issue. We're about we're 25 minutes into this podcast. Oh, fuck. We are. <laughs> you are. We are rolling. I got Vrave, I got no lunch. Vrave, you were late, which is fine. Forget the man of body armor. But you know your rules, man. Thankfully, you're rich. You have a nice little. I'm not drinking another body you. armor. You want? No, I want food. You want a twisted tea? <laughs> I can tell. Crack a twisted How about tea. that? Have you tasted these? No. You got to be kidding me. New sponsor, huh? Where well, we are the twisted, twisted tea? Good. Right, yes. I saw those. Yeah. And for beer Olympics, which do we want to talk about? How you set us up for that? Mm, we interrupt this episode to bring you an ad read, and that is Duke Cannon. We'd like to talk to you about your shower game for just a minute. Here's a fact. The body wash you're using right now sucks. Mm. Absolutely fucking sucks. Fuck your body wash, dude. Simply put, it's not getting the job done. Mm. Oh, that's me. The boys need a shower of substance after a hard day's work, and that's why we use thick, high viscosity body wash from Duke Cannon. Do you knock the viscosity out of the body? Thanks, brother. Thank Thicker you. and girthier Girth. is better. Oh, shit. Duke Cannon's thick body wash is built to work hard and not spew down the shower drain. All their scents are amazing, but my personal favorite is Midnight Swim. It smells like a cannonball into a moonlit lake, not a dip in the hot tub at the starlit motel. I don't know about you boys, but every once in a while, I wake up in the morning, I hurry out the door, and I kind of forget to put deodorant on. But I know when I don't put this cool dry on because my armpits definitely don't feel the AC cook it inside between that swampy little area. So that is actually my favorite product. You have to try Duke Cannon. So for a limited time, we're hooking the boys up with 20% off your first order at DukeCannon.com with code THEBOYS20. That's 20% off when you use co code THEBOYS20 at DukeCannon.com. Duke Cannon. Work harder. Smell better. <laughs> 
get back to this episode. You didn't come to Beer Olympics. Yeah, You're he, about he this hit me. I told you there was an minutes. emergency meeting that yeah. was called Where? Board of Directors at Richland Country Club. He was golfing, dude. I know. And you know what's so wild? It went a lot longer than I thought. I, I was After I finished and I saw it was still going on, I'm like, holy shit. Can if I even think about up. going, yeah. showing up like If you would have showed up at like 6 drink o'clock, and, no chance, dude. We I mean, would have been, you would have been like, I'm we never were pretty. It was like, again. Carnage. Oh yeah, we were black. Dude. It was wild, and the rookies were in a blender too. When they found, when they knew you were coming, like oh, were they? Oh yeah, like I'd be like, hey, I literally went up to him. I was like, I know we're able to talk to you guys. He's gonna come. It's okay to have a drink in front of your coach. I'm letting you guys know this is the NFL. It's all good. It's pro football. It's pro football. As long as you guys show up. And yes, if you have a bad practice, he'll probably yeah. bring up you drinking at beer Olympics, but. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, no doubt. And as I'm like walking away, and so one of them, I'm not gonna say their name. He's like. I don't even know if I'm gonna drink today. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till he leaves, and then I'm telling you, bro, it's never came. It's mental warfare. It is the mental warfare. You kind of need Graves, it, man. You have to have it. Do we have any finishing thoughts on jogging up to the line? How we can just kind of shut that down? I'm not talking for me. I'm talking yeah, for Levin. No, I'm talking for Ruse. I'm talking they, for they don't they don't Raiders. complain. The nice thing is about them. They yeah, don't bitch you, about it. Yeah, they just I'm, do I'm their the voice. Job. I'm their voice. Well, it's it's an old voice. Yeah, that's the reason why it's gone. It's, it's gone it's, now. It's, There's it's no more text voice. Messages. Yeah. He that said it's tough. it's an old voice. Did you ever last year think about like let's let's run it back with me? No. You. Oh. Titan I thought, started, I thought he gave me the eyes. This Titan, way, started, I was like, Titan started to drop some games. It's like, hey, what where's the juice that we need? Like, we were thinking about like just a little pick me up like post Thanksgiving. Get it back up and get, you know. It went through your mind? Having some joke. It always goes through my mind. Those long November days. It gets dark early. Yeah. Get a little juice in the building. You're, you know, depending on your mood, you could be PMSing a little bit more than and others. That, you know, it just, um, what is it? Just didn't work out? Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. didn't work out. Yeah, I had to weigh my options. Atlanta Where are you calling. training at? Right now? Boost. Same spot I was training at when you texted, hey, are you ready to go? Or, yet? or have you had one too many ribeyes? Uh, that's uh, there's a good crew out there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You talking about Titans guys? Yeah, just our I'm there at 6 guys. in the morning. I don't see anybody. You get there early? Yeah. I'm talking wake up at 5.30. You know the deal. 6 a.m. So that way you get back to the, do the dad thing. Putting that work in still. Putting work in. Oh, yeah. You know, doing them half gasters or what are you doing? You need me to hit a punt set for you. We could do a little workout right outside. Drag can? Yeah, drag can. Need to keep my base a little wider. I know that's what you always coach well, me on. You get turned. You get turned sideways. But honestly, square. like, you always talked about the punch. I, for my skill set, felt like I was always better absorbing. Because, like you always made fun mm -hmm. of me on, my T-Rex arms. I, I disagree. Like, you never want to, like, absorb when you have to go cover. You know what I mean? Like, Taylor, if he's playing left tackle, like, okay, you can give a little ground and you can sink, sink. But Taylor doesn't have to shed and go 45, 50 yards now. With Stoney. Guy's I, got a hammer leg. I feel you. I'm just saying, like, not everybody's built with arms like that you have. Right, but you could still, I mean, Bates, punch, punt. Bates punched. You got enough tape on me. I had I had four in one game, New York, 17 and 0. 17 to nothing. What are you talking about? I'm saying I've never given up a punt. I've never given up a block. No, I wasn't saying that you gave up a block. You're like, hey, DB, he he shocks and he does. And I was like, okay, you got tape of somebody who absorbs too. Right, but I'm talking about like the coverage. I'm trying to get you out there faster. DB's faster than you. He's down there. You gotta play to your skill set, brother. I'm trying to flow. I'm trying to let somebody go down oh, there and mess you it up. And then overlap they, over yeah, the top. They, they, they uh, what is it, shoot the bow, they pull their trigger, they miss, it stops their feet. I got a little bit more to work with. Come in here and clean them up. Yeah, get that tackle, get the stat sheet. So do you really have nine? What's your 401k say? Does it say it's nine? nine? It's nine. Yeah. Why? Did you have like a P squad year or what did you have? Two, it's only nine? You had a P squad year and then after I had a, P, a couple I, years, I had one P squad year, it turns yeah. into accredited year after you get right. vested. So the P squad does count now. After you get vested, they roll it back and then count the uh, practice squad year. So are you counting the practice squad year? Oh, 100% of the time. Raves, I'm going to let you in on a little inside ball here. This is not a road you want to go down with Will. <laughs> Will and I got into an argument about this. I was like, so it's really eight. Hey, right. That's where I'm at right I now. Know, I, I understand I where you're at. I that I agree with you. Will and I got without a argument. match about this. 
relationship was. Why do you, Why do you think eight? Oh fuck! Here we go. Because it's you got to go out on the field for. I did three ga- the on Sunday. Oh, three that, games. I went out on Sunday. One tackle. Stat sheet. One game. Two thousand thirteen. Back yeah, to London. Three Fletcher games. Fletcher. You need three games. So you think you need to play three games to be considered? Oh, you played in the NFL for a year. Yes. I think you're wrong. I disagree. Well, we can agree to disagree. I mean, I know what my pension says. It's nine years. You were in the PA. You get the rules. So it's nine years. It's because your ego wants to tell me it's only eight. I would argue that a practice squad year is even That's harder. Not to do with my ego. But like, if I played one year and was he- one game and I was healthy, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't count that as a year. Why not? You're, you're not proud of it. it? It's no, it's like playing one hole of golf and be like, yeah, golf today. <laughs> that's <laughs> walking off the course. But that's that's golfing. There's 18 holes. There's 17 games. There's you wouldn't no, play one game and then leave and say, eh, I played so in the NFL if, if, this if year. You're, uh, now, I don't, you'll have to help me out. Well, with your, the boy, your boys, your boys just chirped you. They laughed when I said, if you like playing they, one they, hole and walking off. They enjoy this. They enjoy this. But I'll say in the golfing world, if you go throughout the entire year of tournaments or whatever, and one guy who's an amateur gets to play in one pro golf am tournament, they are now considered a pro golfer for that year. No, I don't think they are. Are you a pro golfer? Fuck no. You know what I mean? Like, you're losing me here. I don't know where your argument is. All I just thought you all, got hurt. All, like, if you got hurt, all yours is you were this. able-bodied. Here's yours. You were able-bodied. No, I don't think that's right. That's your argument. No. I'm saying, My argument is, is if I was healthy and only played one game of a season, I wouldn't in my mind, mind count that as a season. I would count that as one game. Did you play in the NFL, NFL this year? year? Did you play? Yeah, there you go. Vred, did you play in the NFL this year? And you played one game and you got a tackle on kickoff. I would say, kind of. But I was on a practice squad and I got caught up one game. But I mean, I, I really wouldn't like want to like promote that. And I said, brother, don't worry about that shit. You don't fucking sweat it. did it. You got you, that four hundred one k. You got that Burt Bell. Don't discourage yourself. You got that Burt Bell under your session plan. Yeah, they be proud of it. I don't think I could. I don't think I would say year. We're looking for year nine. I got to get a new jersey. No, we don't have to. That's I okay. tell you what we could do. I didn't. They changed. Sent me to a deal. They pro act. They they went back and retrofit that uh, that practice squad thing. That wasn't always like that. Are you talking about that how they rolled those in? Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I don't think that was ever like that. I want to say Lorenzo, Lorenzo Alexander was, he was somebody that was a That's pioneer sweet. for something like that. Because he had two practice squad years. They only count one of them. But uh, No, that's awesome. I mean, for guys that then once you become vested, they go back and count that year for your pension. Yeah. Yeah. So nine years. Nine years. Looking for 10. Nine years. Uh, we had Are you. 10. Do you want to work we out? Had 10. We had 10. Do you, you want to work out? What do you mean? Like, do like a workout. You know what I mean? Like, we can set up a workout. You're saying Titans bring me in for a workout? Or, yeah, you know, I mean, or I could go, like, you know, work out a boost, watch it boost, see what it looks like can in I the morning. Can we record it and be like, this is for Abe giving Will Compton a private workout for your for the potential of your 10? Yeah, I mean, you can put it on the internet, an extra 25, maybe 30, 40, yeah, hey, whatever like the content now, is. Like now it's like out of nowhere. For the kids, man. I, we, can, we could probably do 25 kids. on that because I think our fine for 10 minutes late is 25. Yeah. No, it's not. No. It'd be tough to tell your how wife. How many guys did I She's find? Gonna be like, Why aren't they how many, how many guys like, did I, I was find on their first time late. late? You got a warning letter. You got a mulligan. That is got a true. breakfast ball. You didn't show up to Beer Olympics. That's strike one, two, and three I right I communicated. There. But did I not communicate? Yeah, but still a warning. You're still going to get the warning I, I, letter. I communicated. But after the show I started. I communicated. It was not after. I'll look at my... You know what? We got receipts. I'll check it right now. If, if, I, get this, if I get this text after 12, we got to have a conversation. But let's go back to this uh, tryout real quick. Can I get a tryout? No. You, no. You signed me? You don't even have to do a tryout? No. Here's how we could do your. No, did you just sign me? No, because I don't think that the, those legs will make it through the workout. You're probably right. <laughs> you are probably correct. What do you think about these legs? It's like you've been working some squats. Hey, that's a good compliment. Appreciate that. Been grinding. I'm okay. Glad you noticed. Do you work out with anybody or just by yourself? By myself. Do you think you get enough out of it? Are you self motivated enough to to really push yourself? Yeah. Like you need to, like you did back in Nebraska. Cornhusker yeah, those candy. Are those are different. Cornhusker candy. 11.57. No, I was so ah. 11.57. Got a call into an emergency meeting at the golf course. 
So I texted yeah, her before yeah, noon. That's still almost like I'm still going to come and do a show. At, Correct. That's, that's now you know how I, like, now you know how I feel when dudes text me that three minutes before the team meeting. And you'd probably still send them a letter of. But as a head man, you still got to make a decision. We're making the decision. Like yeah, we, we don't like that. Check a wait outside for him. Yeah, five minutes away from me, not three minutes. So you'd have been late regardless. I wasn't coming from home. Richland is I was by our home as well. Office. I know. Tea time was noon. What do you think about a uh, one-day contract? For who? And then what would you do after the one day was over? Like have a formal announcement? or Yeah, like press conference at the Titans facility. You there, you talk on my behalf, talk ring about of how great of a player I was, potential ring of honor candidate. But he's somebody who wants to step down. He doesn't like the spotlight. You only so played like 14 him. games for us, didn't you? It's crazy how much of an impact I've made. I know. In the community. It's probably why you guys signed Haas. You see free agents that, that did pan out. Because there are examples. Um, yeah, I'll get back to you. I mean, I think that that's a good idea. We could certainly try to raise some money for charity and try to have a one-day contract. You and Taylor do like a little combo platter. I don't, I don't, I think, I'd like to have my own. I, was just, like I, have my I, own. I think Taylor deserves his own moment. You speaking for Taylor or you, you speak, speak, okay, for, you speak so, for yourself? I'll allow Will to you're speak right, you're me. right. I think I deserve my own moment. Okay. I disagree. Why is that? Because. You feel like you've like got to like, what, catch 17 touchdowns and have sacks and shit no, in this league to like have their own? For as much impact as you could possibly make in 14 games, you did. But you need more than 14 games to have Hang a one on, Number contract. one, 14 games is not, that's not, you're just saying that. I am just more than that. 14. Games. However many was it? I don't know. Maybe in the 20s. You think it was 20? I don't know. Well, you had 16 I mean, I, I, I was, I was, you didn't cut me in the first year. Okay. Well, I was just being funny when I said 14. They're about to find out. Yeah, I understand your humor. I get that you was, you know what? Here we go. Oh, there's 12 games. 12 and 12. 24. 24? Hey, that's worth it. You a... put 12 together that 20 year? Hell yeah. Thank you. You thought you had me cut it on the Peace Corps for a while? Something yeah. happened and somebody got hurt and I had to all of a sudden like do one walkthrough for Lamar Jackson and that offense. You and ended up playing. Jayon breaks his fucking elbow in the game. Mm -hmm. But you ended up playing the Bronco game hey, too. Man. But he came in here, Ravens. Dude, you remember that run game? Yeah, it was brutal. This, this pullers, quarterback. Pull Nuts. Just find a guy with the ball. That's got to be a hard thing to do. But he did. I give him. I will give you credit. Now that you told me that Jayon snapped his elbow, and we're like, Will, where's his helmet? Yeah, Bray was like, Bray was everything he could do just not to get me on the field. Oh, Jesus, God. Your locker room guy. I know. Glue I'm, guy. I'm, I'm yeah, your place is not guy. necessarily on the field. It's in the locker room. <laughs> He's Keep a glue guy. Out. You're a morale guy. Oh. You're like a jester. What if we let you do like a bus, like a remote bus and, and do it in from the locker room one do day? Do what? Like do a bus with, from the locker room. That's a great idea, but yeah. does, I does it have legs the or office. what? No, I was thinking about inviting you to the office and doing it in the office. We would have absolutely done it, but you, as you told would me, you? my, my oh, yeah. code access is retired. I know. So I would have had to meet you. I'd have to meet you. That would have been fun. You'd have to let us in. Let security yeah, know. my code will not work anymore. Compton and Lawan will be here. Yeah, but I was figured I wanted to come see the new digs. You, uh, you, what else? Speaking of one day, one day, uh, one day, are you excited to speak for me someday? Where, where, where are we speaking? Whatever, when I do, whenever, I re, when I eventually retire. You haven't? Tonight? No, what? Oh, I'm available. I'm sorry. We talked about the knees. We know where the knees are at. <laughs> yes. Anything you ask me, I'll, I'll talk to you. Yeah, I want you to. We're gonna have a party. I want you to gas. We're gonna have. We're gonna have a party. Yeah, we're gonna get hammered on the fifty yard line of the Nissan Stadium. I sent you my my press release the one time, the one night, and you're like, "Oh, I don't get a press release." Yeah, well, you did say some really cool things about Ben. I kind of did get salty. And, yeah, I was in my own emotions and, about and that. In my press with, release, I came on, back I, with some heat. And I love that we're talking about this. Sometimes I feel a little awkward in that chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you'll have me as like well, a buffer to come when, in when you like, two are oh. talking I'll just kind of sit there and watch the show like get the popcorn out and I don't like, come and in, I, I always say feel like this and then like I'm the sitting there British Bulldogs and I'm like just the one guy and it's like tag team well, you probably sometimes. think we're sitting next to each other right you don't you do a, you do a great <laughs> you job don't live with him you do a good job of deferring <laughs> <laughs> you just you do a good job of like wait you have your moving. own place 
Listen, here he in town? He took me in during the free agency. Oh. Part of the first year. But yes, I do have my own place now. Yeah. Sure Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I have a family. <laughs> I knew that, what but I thought kid. they all just stayed with... <laughs> yeah, we all just stay at the Lawan residence. That would be tight. I would enjoy that. I'd do like, it's like beer Olympics every day. Man. What you did you... miss out on a hell of a deal. I could tell. It was awesome. What was I talking about the... Uh... You're probably talking about some with the group chat. No. Oh, yeah. You do a good job of... If Will and I start coming at you, you'll... And go at you one. You do a good job of just like putting a dead stop on it, which... Will and I will then text each other just one on one about it. I bet. Yeah. But it's like enough's enough. If I'm going in on one guy, I don't need the other guy. Like, I could say team. But I don't feel like in that situation, a teamwork really. It's supposed to be like I'm, I'm looking for you to enjoy my joke on Will. Just like in the event that you would make a joke about Will, mm. I would enjoy it. As right. the other person, you're looking for the three of us I to am. work I'm in unison. I'm just looking like a little little pat on the back, as opposed to like. I can respect that. Well, Braves coming after help. us. We gotta like do yeah. something. He's Correct. mad at us yeah. for some reason. Yeah, I can. Boys see that. unite. You know what I mean? Yeah, Whatever. I so, what's the next step here for you guys, man? Where are we going with this thing? With the bus? Yeah, it's like Titans facility during camp. No, we do got a we got a training camp tour coming up. We're going to a How couple. How many stops? Just a couple, like two. Two? Is that a tour? Does that count? Does two stops count as a tour? Yeah, or is that anything more than one? Anything yeah. more than one. Okay. That's what Paramount Plus is asking for. That's what we'll deliver. Good. You know is that we're, who we're now working with now? Paramount Plus? We'll be a partner. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this episode to bring you an ad read, and that ad read is Body Armor. Body Armor is the official hydration partner of Bussin' with the boys. The boys hydrate with Body Armor and ride with Team Body armor. We have been drinking body armor from the beginning because we have, they have the best products, best flavors, best ingredients, best athlete partners. No artificial stuff, no fake ingredients, real hydration with electrolytes, potassium, vitamins, and more. We fly through this stuff, dude. We really do. If you haven't tried it, you are living under a rock. You need to get on the body armor wave. Some of the top athletes in the world drink this over Gatorade and the competition. I'm talking Trey Young, Christian McCaffrey, Alex Morgan, Donovan Mitchell, Ronald Acuna, Sabrina. Go ahead. Aya. Lonesca. Ion, um, oh, no, that's not a L. No, that's capital I. Ionesca. 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 Will Compton, Taylor Lewan, and more. Mm. Favorite? Oh, yeah, that's you. My favorite flavor personally is going to be that strawberry, strawberry banana flavor. That stuff, dude. It is so legit. We stay drinking this stuff in the office, at the gym, on the golf course, most of Will on the golf course, when we're hungover, all body armor, all the time. Buy body armor now on Amazon. Back to the episode. Uh, then we then got... What? Going on a tour? Where are you going? Oakland? We That's your were boy. trying to figure it out. That's Vegas? Your boy. How about Zig? Zig is a homie. You're, you're the, you're the homie. Who, where, where else are you going? You going uh, to... Georgia's. Why don't you slide into old Patriots? Uh... When you guys are in New England. So Bill, be able can you to get give us, us one-word answers? Yeah, I get you in. Will Bill do an interview with us? No. Then what are we doing? Like no chance at all, you think? None. Who do you think we have a better shot at? Nick Saban or Bill Belichick? Saban. What's Saban? You know why? why? Recruiting. Yeah, good. he's right. That what do you point. What do you think? Like, what is uh, Bill Belichick in your phone under? Bill. Daddy. Is it dad? It's Bill. Papa. Just Bill? Just Bill. Is that the one nickname you hate the most? Bill or Vrabes? The nickname. Mine? Daddy? Baby, Baby Belichick. I have never even heard that. Oh, oh Vrabes, you've heard that. No, I haven't. Patriots, or Patriots of the South? Yeah. You guys, Baby Belichick. Is that... No, no, that's not a thing. I could probably pull the video up. Yeah, I don't. I don't hear Baby Belichick much. That wasn't a play on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not me throwing that at you. How right. do you feel good though in, in nineteen playing the Patriots and kind of using yeah. the rules to your felt advantage? Felt that great. had to be a nice fuck you. Felt great. Whatever we can win, big game. Well, you talking yeah. about like on special teams? Yeah, the, the punt. They do the delay a game. The offsides. They literally the changed the rule the next point, year, point, dude. And you know, Ravens over there chewing on his gum, probably a nicotine gum. Got fucking. That. Looking at Bills losing his mind, you Real had to free be. Shout out. Yeah, you had to be fucking <laughs> stoked on that. Did that fire you up? Yeah, that was a fire. Stretch, stretch was stretch was having a good time in the uh, in in the in the headset. 
Yeah. Stretch was. Was that fire? Were you fired getting fired? Well, like not I was getting excited fired. We could up, go on a road and be a big underdog. Don't do that, dude. You're you, like, yo, you, we listen. Fucking, hey, ask us some real a mentor. This is a mentor, a guy you played for and then worked under. Absolutely. And all of it, he's known as one of the greatest coaches yeah. of all time. I mean, and you beat him in his own be. game. When we talked, when we talked about going up there, I said they have lost two games in January in like the last fifteen fucking years. So it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To be able to to help the team win a damn game. We've always played the Patriots well. Win a damn game and also like, you know, Patriots have always done. Oh shit. Going back there, I mean, spent eight years there. You know what I mean? It's like finding the finding the little details in the rules. Right. I mean, it was of course it was a big deal. I mean, was able Tyler would able was able to come. Carter was up there, you know what I mean? It was cool. I fucking hate <laughs> you do that. Come on. You know what we want. I want the Vrabe on the sidelines sitting on the bench and I look and I'm like, man, I bet. Like, you want the Vrabe on the sidelines that's mouthing to the DB? I don't even know who the fuck you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or, who you or, want. But, you know, talking shit with the boys, yeah. whatever. Like, I just, did it feel I good? I didn't know who that one guy was. Oh, no, yeah, that's fair. I, yeah, I didn't I know did who it, it was either. But he was talking shit to Vrabe's and he just, mustache frame. That's who we he, want. He, he, chir he chirped. He chirped the wrong dude. He chirped the wrong one. He didn't come correct. No, I was like, no. I, was like, I don't I even know who you are. I, I did not know you were mic'd up one day when we were playing Houston doing fucking two minute over and over again on the half. And What do you want us to do? What do you fucking it, score? They yeah, yeah, but you know how that fucking sounds. I literally go up to him. You've seen the clip. I'm like, hey, what's our, what are we thinking about this next two minutes? Are we, are we like playing regular? I'm thinking, are we playing regular ball? Score. Or are we doing two minute? Because it's only a, a one score game now, and there's plenty he, of time he, on the you're clock. You're not explaining Look at me. You're explaining everybody. You're, you're, you're he's explaining defend, for he's defending no. himself. I mean, yeah, yeah, I am. And you just go, we score. And I'm thinking, I'm fucked. That's a body Points. bag. Thank God, I'm thinking, no one, thank God no one will thinking? ever hear that. Thinking and then sure enough, it's score. clipped the next week. It's God, good. I was like, God damn it. Stretch gets the okay, all though. So she blame hey, Stretch. How valuable is Stretch? Talk about Extremely fucking Stretch the fucking flowers. You ought to get him on the bus. He won't. Uh, he has. He, he wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. Stretch come knows on. where the bones are buried. There's he no does. question. There's no question. He fucking does. Too. Sitting out there, right outside your office, he's got no windows. None. He just fucking hangs out in there. None. I would love. I love to sit with him. Just watch games. Just All watch day. film. Is Stretch just a situational master? He is really, really good, man. Him and I watch a lot of tape together. Watch a lot of game. He goes through. He helps me put that Friday tape together. That thing's a Friday gem. Day, you miss it, don't you? I miss the Fridays every now and then. I might send them to you guys. So you I, guys don't, I, don't miss the, I don't miss the, those faces. Like, the just fucking... Yeah. I don't miss that. Two for one special. Yeah, the two, yeah, the two for one special. Two for one special. Why? Laid a dish. You didn't like that? I don't just necessarily know. It the, just the depends face. on the day. It just depends on, on what, the day. what, you tired? No, if you're PMSing or not. Oh, no, it was always... You bet. You'll be in on Friday, and then you'll realize, like... You might come in on Saturday, and it's like, hey, Friday, right. I mean, it's Friday just depends night. if somebody pissed night, me off. Friday night, they go the way Ray wanted. He didn't get yeah. that. Yeah. Thursday night. It was, yeah. But like I tell him, like, they can't fuck up my Friday. You know what I mean? Your Friday got fucked up so much. Right, but I tried to tell him that, that they couldn't. And, and it was like, somebody's going to more than get you one. You would just fuck up everybody else's Friday, but nobody's going to fuck up yours. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. That was, I've, cha I've changed. You have. Hey, you yeah, have. Which is kind of what we went to in 2018. I've changed. 2018, it was like, what Braves are we getting today? Because there'd be happy be Braves the same and then there'd guy be every day. Yeah, but in 2018, we weren't that. Yeah, I would say you'd we're be. We're all more kind consistent. of feeling each other out. No question. Kind of like the. Right here. The court jogging show. up to the line, which I'm willing to go back and talk about if you want. No, I'm not willing to have that conversation. That's okay. <laughs> what did you ultimately do? I went to the fucking line. No I was shit. getting tired of getting yelled at. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I will say well, this. It's mostly Keith fucking well, in the back the, all the time. I'll that say shit would make me so mad. And then. Another thing, the jogging up to the line and pre pre practice before the warm up in the walkthrough, I, like that, I again, don't gotta. Everything's full speed to the ball is snapped. It's we don't even warm yet. Operation, operation, Operation's operation. Great, but we're walking I, through, and I've already done a, a whole indie drill. The full the full speed. Adolf Carter over there, the dude, wants me to speed, fucking rip around. The full speed to the ball is snapped was designed for your brain. Yeah. So that mentally you were operating at full speed. But when the ball was snapped, it was just a, a light jog. Yes, except and, for the fact that also, it also when people would wear tennis shoes or too much comfortable stuff out on the field. Yeah, you get hot at that. Full speed until it snapped because it's like, then he can say, hey, why don't you wear... You no, know, I never I'm not, said I'm not that. Talking about that. I'm not talking about like a Saturday walkthrough. No, he's, I'm talking about he's talking about the pre practice Wednesday, Wednesday. Oh, Camp gotcha, days. gotcha, gotcha. Like, we have full pads on. Jog. It's fucking humid outside. And then I've already done an Indy and a half 
plus a walkthrough going over protection. Then we or new and review as Keith would call it. Then we go to that and we're like, pro, hey, we're jogging. Pro football and, player complaining. And then Keith goes, Imagine <laughs> that's all that. right. That's all right. Keith goes, Hey, it is a jog through, but I'll let you guys know, like, we have to go just a little bit faster than D-line, which you 1%, know that's going to cause a... 1% rule. It's ridiculous. You got to go 1% just, harder than the guy across from you. You got to think to yourself, how do they not see? Remember, tar remember Tart's rookie year? Couldn't run a play. It was a fight every play. Dude. Him and Levin, I'm like, something's got to give here, guys. Literally just trying to help each other out. Jog through. Stay on sides. Yeah. Stay off the ground and know where you guys are going to. And then ultimately, it's just like... And then you gotta go. Like, how do we fight in a fucking jog, dude? Just go stretch. And then we gotta go to meetings after. And Keith pulls up the jog through, which is fine because we're going over if there's MAs or something Landmark. like that. Landmark. But he's talking about how our effort is bad in the jog through. And I'm thinking, what are we talking right. about here? No, I mean, I get that. You know, I mean, there's certain things where it's like the reason for the jog through was for us to steal reps. Yeah. Steal reps and not having to reps? go full speed or live. And then ultimately during practice, those same plays are going to repeat and you maybe have a chance to, to fix it or know what's coming or storm alert. Yeah. I used to love that. I love the storm. Loud when guy. in doubt, uh, when, when in doubt, just yell storm, storm alert. And then if you're wrong, or if, doesn't you, matter. Yeah, if they I don't pick it up, it. I said it. I alert said movement. It. Storm CYA. alert. CYA. <laughs> Tell them just them throw it all out there. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm talking. Games, uh, movement. It would blow my alert. mind because Ben, Obviously, me, Ben, me, Roger, and Ben would be very, would be very talkative. And Ben would be like, you know, Nate, he didn't say a fucking word. Still hasn't. David Lee wouldn't say a word. Nick didn't say anything. And it's like, guys, you guys just be loud. All you got to do is be loud. Then they think you're doing something. On the jog to the line, I will say, like, if you're a defender and you're... Don't. Please don't. Well, it, it is true. And you're a little bit tired. And you see a, a run to the line of scrimmage, you know. Thank you. Depending the, the, on the type of team you are. I'm, I'm, I'm the coach's kid. Yeah. Coach's kid. Jim Rat. <laughs> You're fucking <laughs> right, on. brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> I get that. In the fourth. Then call um what's it called when we fast break? Think about Speed think, break. Think, Speed think, break. think about and obviously the Titans have been good since then too, but when you guys went to had the run to the AFC championship, you the way the run game was clicking, or the Ravens that one year when we ended up beating them in the fourth and AJ or Derek's breaking all these tackles at the end AJ. and mm -hmm. showing the highlights. And then, De and then Derek the next week, like, guys, this is what overtime. happens when you, it is like, a, yo, the boys look <laughs> fucking juicy out there. Uh, your guys' AFC year. And guys year, are coming off the bench. Yeah, yeah. When you guys went nine and seven, you're going into each playoff game. Once you beat New England, that was kind of the one, like, as a fan perspective, you're kind of like, if they beat them, when you guys beat them, it's like, yo, they're going to fucking beat Baltimore just because a lot of that juice and momentum, like. That from, game was a bloodbath, too. It was an absolute blood. Yeah. Have you it's the like offensive nine on line? Seven. The offensive line in the AFC championship run. I mean, have you seen better ball as a unison? I love watching that line of scrimmage move. Dude. Finishing. You ran the same fucking Born. plays over and over again. Zoro. Even Zach, even Quattro. Zoro. Even to Zach. the right, odd to the left. Yeah. Just fucking run. And I had to hit high tower like six times. You know, win five hundred. <laughs> high tower's a thick. He's, He's thick a thick now. boy, dude. And oh, then what God. what was it there? What was the Brave saying what was a hyenas? Yeah. yeah. Remember because Tom's this. social media dude like put on something about that. Being the lion or whatever. Taylor called me. Tom Brady posted something. Right. And that, right that, that, that morning. Day. Yeah. The hyenas and all that. Right. So go ahead. Yeah. Taylor FaceTimed me right after the meeting. I guess you did the hyena thing or something. Mm. And it was just, just, I don't know, talking about how just juicy it was on. It, it, it was a nice fucking. It was good. It was a nice it was good. That clip was awesome that that Brady put out. And I hit the boys up. I was like, you need to flip this. If we win, you got to flip this. And it was elite. Had to what, feel good. What, else do, we, what else do we have? What, uh, hey, do I got you guys... a question. I, I, I got Go one. Go ahead. If you take the Titans out of it, if you're going to coach one NFL team, what team would you want that to be? Oh, st we're not doing that. What do you mean? Because there's, there's 31 other teams. Got one job. I can only coach one team at a time, man. Yeah, but you know, you play. No, we're not playing City, that play game. The Patriots, we're not playing the Steelers. That. No. Tennessee. I want. I want. I would literally, obviously, want to see this thing through, man. I um. We get a new stadium. I mean, come on, dude. That thing's gonna be sick. Yeah. Like, it's gonna be sick. So, that that that's my goal. You know, what I mean, especially in a career where there's a lot of movement and. Uh, 
know, I'm proud that we've had some guys here that have raised their family. You look at some of these coaches that are, you know, been with us for six years, some of them, um, that, that's a long time, you know, a long time in, in any profession, especially coaching. So that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Not where the hell else would I want to coach. What about college? Can we do that? Fuck that. You would never do that? Because you, you know Ohio State, guys was, do? Ohio State was Ohio State was days you guys ahead. Are and everyone's saying Mike media? Rabel. No. Like, Man. Dude, that is ridiculous. I'll tell you, if Rabel's ever What they're giving these guys college, to come before they're even on campus yeah, and, like, right. they're recruiting year-round in the transfer portal. And if this guy doesn't start, he's leaving. And, like, that's a lot. It's gotten yeah, soft. A lot. Because there were a whole huh? bunch of people. It's gotten soft, hasn't it? I don't know if it's gotten soft, but it's certainly you call him pussy. You got a man. It's there's a lot of managing. Uh oh, hang in there, Slim. There's a lot of just uh, stuff that you have to deal with outside of football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this guy, big NIL guy. Big. I, mean, I take he, the money. He would. There's be. no question. Big and I see some of those cars. Those guys are driving. If you would have gave me money in college, I would be literally be dead. I really you believe that. You see those cars? Yeah. I mean, I mean him too. How is it? How is the NIL at Michigan? They doing a good job? Yeah, I mean, we're you know. Is it okay? I, I have no idea how what they're paying players, but we see how they're doing right now. We see, and I tell you what, they're doing a good job. Yeah, I mean, they get that win in Columbus this past year is. Oh yeah, two in a row, right? Two in a row against Ohio State. Yeah, big year this year. Beat us in three years. Big, big year. year. We trying to put something on it? Um, we will. What else you got for me? Who are, give me the three toughest players you've ever played with as a player. Played with. Brian Waters, last couple years of my career. Seymour. Rodney Harrison. I guess I only gave me three, right? Give me, give me a couple more. It seems like you're... I mean... Joel Steed was a nose guard for Pittsburgh. Levon Kirkland. Uh, Dermotti Dawson was probably low-key one of the best players I ever played with. I didn't know anything about national football. He's got, I mean, he would reach, man reach three techniques. He was a center. I, I couldn't, it was amazing. He could move like that, huh? He could fly. I mean, Wild. talk about helmet speed. I mean, <laughs> um... I saw Ted Johnson break a guy's helmet. That's pretty Three, tough. four defense. Just you lined up over the guard at like four yards and was like straight ahead, no fair dodging. Jamie Nails, was like 350 pound guard for the Dolphins. Ted hit him and his helmet broke like an eggshell. I was like, holy shit. Thank God that wasn't me. Uh, Seymour, Harrison, are there any stories that you're thinking about like when you say their names? So we signed Rodney, um, kind of like maybe right at the beginning of training camp or something. Chargers had kind of cut him. And so it was like one of those early, like full padded practices and Kevin Falk like ran an angle route or something. I don't know. And, and Rodney like he hit the shit out of him. Like he hit him. It wasn't like a thud. It was like he hit him. He fell. Rodney didn't go low or Rodney didn't like leave his feet or hit him in the head or anything. And, uh, Everybody's like, ooh, the other fans are all. And Steve Neal, the former wrestler, was like left guard. He runs out. And he's telling Rodney, he's like, you can't hit him like that. Right? He's like, shut the fuck you. I hit whoever I want. O-line coach comes out. Dante comes out. And he's like, man, you can't hit him like that. He goes, shut up. I'll beat your ass too, old man. <laughs> Me and Brewski looked at each other like, holy shit. We, we got one. We got <laughs> this guy's one. Fuck savage. Jesus. <laughs> and we laugh about it now, but like, that's how Rodney was. Like, he didn't think he did anything wrong. It was Kevin Falk. He didn't like take a cheap shot on him. Like, he just hit him. Mm. <laughs> I mean, me and Brew were like, crazy. we got one. You guys had a fucking squad. Any, I mean, are there any, any, I mean, are there just, any early Brady stories that people might not know about? I'm sure there's plenty of early Brady stories people don't know about. What's one? They're not going to. Oh, they're not, they're not. I'm going to speak for myself. There you go. Guidelines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's Guidelines. the smartest player you've ever coached? From the rafters. 
Rip it. JP says, who is the smartest player you've ever coached? Yeah. I know my vote. Probably Ben Jones. Max when? Bulla. Linebacker. Oh, from uh, Michigan, Michigan State. State. You had him at Houston, yeah? Really? That was out of nowhere. I did not expect Just that. Just because I remember he didn't take a rep and he could play like seven positions. For real? Didn't take a practice rep. He was, ni- he was nice at Michigan State. Yeah, but he, he was. He was just, uh, he, he could play Mike, play Will. I mean, he played like literally every position possible and didn't take one rep during the week. He would just rep everybody else. Yeah, ben. I think Ben's the ben, answer. I mean, Ben seems I mean, like a, uh, just a coach, front office guy. I mean, he's like, he's like yeah. the bridge. Yeah, there's coach. no question. Yeah. Like, I had a lot of. You know of, who's doing a hell of a job for us is Luke Stocker. Yeah, I heard he's with he you. We saw him at tight end you. Yeah. He said he picked it up. We're like, yo, what's it like, man? What's it like? He's like, different. <laughs> yeah, different. He's like, but it's cool. He's done like, a great job. Has he? Transitioning quickly from a player to coach, and he's into it. And, you know, is he gr- full time now? Or is he still He's going to be like with a- us throughout the season. So, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. We, is that we, something where he goes for like, a, like OTAs or a few weeks? He was. And then you kind of yep. just offer it? Mm hmm. He, he was going to do the OTAs, the offseason, the whatever nine week program, and crushed it and offered him a season long opportunity. Would you hire Taylor for coach? No. I wouldn't be good at a coach. I would not do well. Next question. You wear the fit. Yeah, I'd wear the hell out of the fit. What about just kind of like fit. a consult? What if I just come in and talk about man reaches? No, why don't we just maybe Zoom? <laughs> come on. You just you gonna walk around. Just you just walk. You just want to walk around the building. I do. Just want to walk oh, around, get my jaw set. In. The Zoom week. Yeah. COVID. I don't think COVID. Tuesday night game against the Buffalo Bills. We did not practice for what eight days. We're prepping for the forever. Steelers. Yeah. So we literally had like three days of preparation for Trans-ish. the Bills. Transition. And then we beat the shit out of them. We did. Was there a piece of you that's like, hey, we don't even need to practice anymore? No. Not brave. Like, all of us. All of us were like, we. Why do we even need to practice? We yeah, just, we remember just we showed like, up for like them. forty minutes, reintroduced ourselves, and said, yeah. "Hey, um," and then we're like, "We got to get out of here." We all thought, we all thought we're gonna get blown the fuck out, destroyed. Yes, I. <laughs> we thought there was <laughs> no chance we were gonna win, and obviously you there were doing like, a good job. Be like, boys, it doesn't matter. Any given Sunday type of speech, like you did a fire good alarms speech. going off at, yeah. at his yeah. house. Who gives a fuck? We'll play them anywhere. We'll play them in the parking lot type talk, and we go in the locker room like. We're probably going to get blown the fuck out. And we beat the shit out of them. Yeah, that you, was you, wild. You, you basically just have like the fucking mentality like we all know the asterisk that comes with if you lose. So it's like there's nothing to lose, right? Yeah. It's like when you're playing and it's just a downpour. And on defense, you're kind of like just taking shots because you realize you're just going to be in there like, yo, it's wet as fuck. We're going to be slipping. And it was yeah. some turnovers early. And next thing you know, they're running out the clock and, and, and Willie C's making tackles at the end of the game. Okay, I see. <laughs> <laughs> what you were? You know that yeah, is yeah, longest yeah, road yeah, back. Yeah. What? Like, what? Play. What? Was that? Was that a jab? Dude, fucking, we know your humor, brother. I, I respect it. I respect your game. Don't get it twisted. But uh, you better watch. Yeah, your, I remember when, I remember you when, watch your fucking tongue with me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we can step out. We can wrestle. We a don't have bit. to fucking step out anywhere. We can do that shit right you in here. Grabbing that <laughs> knee a little too much. You've been grabbing that knee a little too much. I'm letting you know. Will will body bag you. There ain't a fucking chance. I will beat Will's fucking Move the mic. Hey, and, the what, and what's happening right now, he's, he's thinking about it right no, now. No, I'm not thinking knows, about he it. He knows he'd have to get a one to him before I had him. I got my wherewithal with me. I think you take Rabe's note. Wrestling? If you beat my... You come down, we'll fight. And then if you fight, if we fight, you can go do your podcast right in my office. For how many episodes? At the, at the facility? Yeah. Where else uh, is It's home office? game for me. What are the boundaries? What do you mean? Like, there's rules? I didn't know if you wanted a headgear. No. Or gloves or something. You got to wear a mouthpiece. You got to protect this chick with. <laughs> <laughs> Those things look sharp, dude. Uh, let's hit the twist. But, hey, team. no. Uh, when, 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 he, when he said he got some tackles at the end of the game, when Haz came up and was like, hey, you're going to go in, I was like, Haz, I don't fucking want to go in right now. I'm fucking, I'm stiff as a board, dude. Yeah. It's, it's over. Like, we won. I don't want to fucking go in there and have some fucking garbage time. But that's a, just a little side story. On the type of guy you had that year. We know. Locker room guy. <laughs> Your place wasn't on the field. Your place was in that. No, sometimes. In there, dapping dudes up. Having good conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. What else? I think we're, we're getting close to the end, man. Getting close, boys. 
I think we got about 30 minutes left. The fuck we do. Twisted tea. Let's go. I'm getting hangry. All right, keep it twisted this summer with Twisted Tea. It tastes like real iced tea because it's made with real brewed tea, meaning it's really delicious. Real brewed tea feels like it's kicks. Of, what the fuck am I doing? I'm reading this. 5% ABV, <laughs> full of flavor and Why'd very refreshing. Me? Just to let you know, it's really delicious. Oh. Twisted Tea, but I do appreciate you just fucking... Twisted Tea turns up the heat on any occasion, making it the perfect product for any summer occasion. Daytime, nighttime, outdoors, and poolside. Goes down smooth, and there is zero carbonation, which makes it easy to drink all day long. Not to mention football season. It's the best product to sip on while watching your favorite team or coaching from the sidelines. Twisted Tea feels fun and celebrates extreme fandom on game day. Twisted Tea is the perfect alcohol or beverage for game day, whether tailgating in the parking lot, watching at a bar, or watching with friends at home. Twisted Tea is there to turn up your game day. Keep it twisted, boys. Grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today. Our Twisted Question of the Day. No free shout-outs. That, that's, a, that's a paid shout-out right no, there. Oh, there's no question. But it tastes delicious. Take that with you. I will. You should. What's what Actually, Twisted Tea? cases, right? What's the what's question of the day, Willie? Are you still willing to cut your dick off for a Super nope. Bowl? Nope. Nope. You guys heard it here first. Titans no. are not going to make the playoffs this year. Because I realized... Marriage that, is a lot better? That the P no, it wasn't the marriage. It was great. The P <laughs> you literally said been married 20 still, years. I know. And that just means, like, you'll figure it out once you guys have been married 20 years. No. That puts you on the map, dude. Like, that... I would probably... I'd cut that finger off. Show him the finger. I'd cut that one off to win. Can you lift that thing up? All the way down to the knuckle? Yeah, just the part that doesn't bend. Just, just the straight part. Like? I mean, if you can bend, if you can bend can the bend top. Like yeah, I can. Yeah, but you're not cutting your dick off anymore. You're over no, that. No, over that. I grew. I've grown up. Would you get a tattoo? Like you... Would you get a tattoo? Yes. Saying "I love busting with the boys" on your low back. Ooh, I like that. Uh, no. For a Super Bowl. For a Super Bowl, Braves. They have laser like, treatment that's now. That's my incentive to win a Super Bowl is no, to get that's that just tattoo. Like, I would get a tattoo in front of, of like, the boys, like a picture of the team, you know? Can we be in the picture? No. <laughs> Can we get rings if you win? Team. We're Can part we of rings? the team. Yeah. We've done a lot for you. Um, We've done, done a lot, lot for your you program. Too. Done we're a lot part, for you guys, We're part of the boys, right? I know. Yeah. I would get a tattoo. I'd, I'd get a tattoo. What would it say? Can we design it? Sure. We can design the tattoo. Within reason, I get three choices. Done. And it's got to be like actually Titan. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Big mitts. Those are easy mitts, dude. I'm handling that easy. <laughs> are you guys talking about fighting like fighting, fighting? I think that's what he is. I, you know, the whole Ohio brain, it kicks in. It just goes into animal mode. It's yeah. fight or flight. Ohio people are doing it. We, we, we know what he's picking. Yeah. So you got you to let it calm down, but make no mistake. If we go to the ground, you're going to be in trouble. Because you're a wrestler? Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you are old. I'm not, yeah, no, I, I got no interest in wrestling. Yeah. Great. Did you wrestle in, what's up, bud? Would you beat Dan Campbell in a fight? Oh. Would you um, beat Dan Campbell in a fight? I mean, sure. I think I could beat anybody in a fucking fight, except for like Jeff Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to bring him up. I had to bring him up. No. I meant, we battled on the field. I mean, Christ. Who got the better of who on the field? Mm, I don't I don't remember. Like if you don't remember, it's probably him. No, I don't I I would doubt that. I mean He's a tight end. Did he play all with the Lions? Or was he with the uh, Dolphins at all? Dallas. I know I played against him once when he was in Detroit. And probably that year against the Giants. We used to scrimmage the Giants every year. We fights in training camp every year back in the day. That's another thing, too. You're mixing it up, huh? There were. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah. The, the Patriots and the Giants used to practice every preseason. You seem like the type that would want to, like, you're wanting the mix-up to happen. You were like that when we did with uh, Washington and Houston. So the first time uh, I was a rookie and um, got drafted by the Steelers and it was like 
hotter than hell and it's humid down in the valley, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And mind you, we have so many like veteran players on the Steelers. Like, I'm just trying to figure this out and I'm getting tired. And it's tight end and me, we start wrestling. I throw them down, like, whatever. Dumb players were punching each other with a helmet on. You know what I mean? It's just like not really doing much. But, anyways. So, like, you always come out thinking that you won, you know, like, yeah, I won the training camp. But really, you just lost because you're so exhausted. You, you know, the coach is like, no, stay in there. Like, you're not, you're not coming out. And like, go in the next play. And you, like, can't even move. So, meanwhile, I've been there for, like, four months after I got drafted. And Greg Lloyd hasn't said a word to me since the day I got drafted. It hasn't literally, I've, like, avoided, like, eye contact with him because it's just like, oh, shit, that's Lloyd. So I'm sitting in my locker and like my head's down. I'm exhausted and I see this like shadow come over me. He's like, yeah, next time what you want to do is you want to take your hand and you want to go up on a knee. First time he talks to me is after I got in a fight. Like I had to prove myself mm. to him so that he was, I was worthy enough to talk to him. I'm like, Greg, like you haven't said, I've been scared to death of you for four months and I finally get into a fight. I said, I, if I'd known that, I'd have been fighting somebody in April. Yeah. Just so that you talk to Getting me. Helmet on, but that was like fight. that was his like, you know. Okay, this guy's like worthy of me talking to him, and then we end up being boys. Earn your stripes, I guess. My favorite would beat Dan Campbell in a fight. That's what I heard. I mean, I, I mean, I'm taking, I'm taking Braves. I'm taking Braves. Yeah. I mean, if Dan him. Campbell's, I would hope. Like, yeah, I'm Danny. I'm taking you. Bro. No but question. You did, you did bring up Jeff Simmons. Is that your favorite player of all time? No, it's not my favorite player. He's out there. No. Where am I at on that list? <laughs> right outside the top three. You and Taylor are tied. I'll take that. I, l I legit thought I wouldn't even be top 10. So I'm stoked on that. So four? Four A? No, four I just B? said outside of oh, somewhere. Okay, so I'm back so where I thought. Just I'd outside be. of top three. Yeah. Just like you said, you were going on tour and you're going to two places. Well, I'm doing a fall tour too, and there's five stops. <laughs> Because we're on vacation too. Vacay. Yeah. Italy. Where really? Yeah. Nice. Have you been? Nope. Go to Destin, Florida. It's got an Italy vibe. That's that 38. That's 38. At Nashville Beach, baby. <laughs> Every, the whole right. town goes down there. Taylor, you got a place down there, 38, Willie's staying at? No, I went there for the first time for the fourth. <laughs> yeah. How was it? It was cool. It was hot. A lot of rules that I don't like. But it was beautiful, and I really enjoyed it. You are, are you really going to Italy? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Baby going? Two weeks, yeah. Sweet. Just flying with us. So it'll be fun. It'll be us three out there. How long are you going for? Two weeks. You traveling around? Do what? Are yeah, you? we're going to like, like four or five different different parts, and this is about as far as I get because I don't really know much. Our trainer's there. stuck there. I guess they shut the airport down Friday. Oh, oh really? One. Big Mike. Mikey. Big Mike. They Big shut Mike. the uh, airport down, I guess. I don't know. That's wild. He probably lied. Just stay out there a little longer. Todd told me this morning. Yeah. Well, hey. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, you are the man. You guys aren't going anywhere in my life. You guys are... Hey, you're, you're the you man. You guys are stuck we with love me. You. Don't... The, the, the painting of the negative, like, you're the man. But I appreciate what you guys have done. And uh, I think probably the most important thing is that you treat my kids well. The boys, uh, they love you. And uh, I appreciate that because I know it's like, people are always like, oh, yeah, you should Tyler play here. I'm like, I wouldn't want my son to play here. I know when you guys go in the locker room. Like, I, I didn't want, like, that's not fair to Tyler. And people don't understand that. And it's like, dude, there's got to be a division. Like, I, I get it. You want to tell my kids? I'm sure my kids think I'm an asshole sometimes too. You know what I mean? But that was the whole reason. I was like, no, like, and being in the locker room kid. too, like you build camaraderie off. Right. And I don't want like yeah. that to be different. So it was like, but I do appreciate how you guys treat him. Yeah, Carter gave me a ride home one night after uh <laughs> after your comedy well, show. The, yeah, yeah, the comedy show. And one, also one eyed Willie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, hey Carter, I really appreciate you giving me a ride home, man. This is awesome. I was like, let your dad know you took hey, me. That home. was a wild night. That was a fun night. That was, that was a, a fun, fun night. night. He said it was awesome. Yeah. Dude, as far as like the back and forth with Carter, and then we can we can get off. But it, it jogged my memory of we hit, the Ravens game happened. Then I get to play the next week in, in the Colts. Trip, fall, have a couple of bad plays that first series. End up getting benched that game to the next day 
Carter is in my DMs buying our Black Friday thing to where I send a video to where we do our video sending. Yeah. He's like, hey, I want you to say it this way. And I'm literally, my head's already in the blender because I'm just pissed that, you know, that's how the situation went for me. And I trip, you do all these things and you're just playing all these plays on your head. And I'm thinking, there's no way in hell I want to fucking send Vrabel a Black Friday video. Do you remember that? You remember? I know you remember that. I remember. I remember I'm you. I'm shocked I still had to pay for stuff. <laughs> you well, don't have. Don't, 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 do don't do that. Don't do that. Just ask us. You hit us. You'll be like, hey, and it's always no. Absolute. But back then, no, I know. Back well, that then, was just Carter was... being fucking Carter. Oh fuck! Spending like, hey, my money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spending your money and be like, hey, you have to make this video for your dad. I'm just thinking, your dad just That's fucking what it was destroyed me for not understanding um, ultra. On the fucking goal line, it was just down my throat about it. <laughs> I was like, he just berated me, and you want me to send him a video? I was like, I'm sure he doesn't want to see me right now. What, did you give up a touchdown or something? Coverage? Were you the no, edge guy? We, the, the, defense came up, the defense gave up, gave up. Were you the force guy? I can't even remember. I think so. I think so. It was something up the middle. I, were you, right. I think you were just mad that they scored. Oh, right. Because well, if you're the force yeah, guy, yeah. all you got to do is... I'm talking about, like, my back and forth with Carter, like, in my head as oh, a player, like you're just was thinking, gonna yo. Is this kid setting me up? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, yo, I tripped on a tight end. I fucking don't see something. I fuck up the ultra for Vrabes. And you want me to send him a video being like, hey, thank you for buying, buying some merchandise gear. on Black Friday. That had to be tough. It was. I remember was. that, too, because you called me and you're like, hey, I'm starting. I'm starting I was game. fired up. Fired up. the table. And I yeah. legit watched that first series. I was like, oh, no. I uh, know. I mean, it had to be the same way. It was I, for me in the Cardinals game. Yeah, I had a... Uh, watch your boy no, out there. It wasn't that bad. Dude, that shit was bad. It, it, his game wasn't that bad. Was that the worst game you've ever seen a player play? Live? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dude, you legit Dude, called... Dude, that was shocking all. That whole game. Dude, you literally called me in your office. I know. Next, he called me and he's like, hey, come to my office. I'm thinking... <laughs> I might actually get cut. I have no idea driving. And you were really nice. You were like, hey, I want you to know like, you didn't lose that game. Like, like, dude, you did not lose this game. It's a long game. season, brother. We're yeah. going to need to get back. Yeah. That was probably the worst. I think I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Talon and Mike about it on the way back from Kittle Fest. And I was like, that was the worst day of my life, I think. There's no question, dude, dude. that that was like a, it was like tough for the rest of the, oh, I bet. Rest of the year. I remember, uh, who was it? Who was the OC? Was it Todd? Todd was the OC. And he's like, First play, running behind you. Like, he just, there was a couple of plays into, I had like a couple of screens. I had a couple like plays that I was like a lead blocker. And, and I remember calling you, going to get my IV. I'm like, hey, this, this game plan, I got like a lot in it. And I'm still going to, I was like the most confident I've ever gone into a game in my entire life. And then after the second series, I was like, oh, oh fuck. wow. Dude, there's nothing worse sitting in the third quarter, just getting your shit pushed in. Wanting, it, just hoping that the game ends. Just, yeah, like hopefully, you know, like there's a lightning forever. and they're just, hey, we'll just end it now. You're, like, you're just like, oh my God, there's really nothing you can do. You look up at Ruse and, and uh, Corey and they're just looking at you back and you're like, they can't say nothing. That was fucking Nothing rough. to say. That was rough. But that was really nice of you. I do appreciate the, the conversation we had. Well, I appreciate it. I'm happy for you guys. You guys kick ass, man. You guys are doing great. Get you under in the bye week, huh? As a repayment for not making the beer Olympics and then being late. I have, uh, yeah, sure, we'll make it work. I fucking love that, Braves. That was a that was a from the hip too. That was. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, this one goes. A lot of respect for you. Hell yeah, boys. Happy Appreciate you, Braves. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Subscribe, rate five stars. Hands.